for the next few hours. Nothing exists except for Cleveland High School sports. Because the Quad Brothers are here. Outlaw. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Choir Brothers Sports Show. My name is Kevin Hanley. Got my peoples in the building with me. Got the homie Eli Robinson. What up? Got the homie Phil Rucker. Yeah. Got the homie Reggie Logan. What it do? Whole squad in the building tonight. All right, man. So uh, tonight we have a, a good show lined up for you guys. We're going to recap some of the scores um, in uh, girls and boys high school basketball. Um, we have two guests on tonight at 730 from the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains. Uh, junior center forward Michaela Elmore will join us. We'll talk to Michaela. And at 8 o'clock from the Illyria Catholic Panthers, uh, senior power forward Allie Winnen will join us. So uh, Michaela Elmore at 7.30 and uh, Allie Winnen at 8, 8 o'clock. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you want to hear um, those interviews, um, you can, excuse me, uh, if, well, if, you, if you're listening right now, you probably already have it. But if you don't, um, download the free Cry Brothers Sports Show app. You can listen live or go back later and listen at your earliest convenience. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, it is a bad time to be a Cleveland sports fan right now. It is. It's a bad time. Browns are currently losing to the Cardinals. What, 38? Is it 38 17 or 38 20 now? 38 24. 38 24. With less than two minutes left in the game. So that game's over. Unless some, by some miracle they come back and win, but I doubt it because the defense is trash. So 38 24, 121 left in the game uh, out in Arizona. Browns are losing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. the fire sale has begun. I don't care what y'all say. Indians trade Corey Kluber to the Texas Rangers and get back Delano, DeShields, and Junior, yeah. Junior and some guy I never heard of. Yeah. Delano, and Delano, DeShields, like 45. No, no, his son. That, his son. Oh, oh. That's his son. <laughs> but his son, his son hit two forty eight with like four home runs last year. Roll yeah. tribe, yeah. trash. Right, trash. Roll tribe. The line of the shields and something. Let me see what they got. Let me let me see. I'm I'm gonna look and see if I, if I can see what they got back for. That was um, it. It was that him. That was it. That him was it. And, uh, the shields and, and, some, and, and some pe- some, some young young That's relief it. pitcher that throws ninety nine to a hundred miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're talking to the Dodgers. About trading Francisco Lindor to L.A. We'll take two tickets, please. Mike Clevenger's on the table. Yes. I mean, you know what? Mike Clevenger's on. I, the table. Yeah, I heard a rumor that they were they were um, that Mike Clevenger may be included in the Francisco Lindor deal. Yes. <sighs> I'm. A, I can't stress enough as a Cleveland fan. You have to have a backup team <laughs> in every sport. <laughs> <laughs> My backup team, <laughs> Josiah Garrett Cole. <laughs> so I'm all right over here. Garrett Cole. Yeah, Yankees, man. Nine years, $324 million. My backup team just signed Madison Bumgarner. So oh, yeah, the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Oh, so it's final. Carlos beat the Browns 38-24. Oh, God. Six Dog eight. check. So now the best that they can do this year is 8-8. Eight and eight. Dog check. What I tell y'all, what I tell y'all in the offseason what they was going to do. Told you. So we did the exact same thing we did last year with, le- with, with lesser talent. Because yeah. we went seven, eight, and one Don't last you. year. So yes. No, with more talent. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. No, you were yeah. last year. Yeah, we did talent. better last year with lesser talent. Yeah. But Ooh. you know what's the difference? We had Greg Williams as the mm-hmm. head coach. But now the Browns say they want Freddie there long term. So do you do you do you chalk do you chalk this up to to to, to growing pains? No. I blame I blame Baker Mayfield. He the one that vouched for and 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 pushed for Freddie Kitchens in the first place. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we we still have Greg Williams, but they let a rookie quarterback dictate the the progression of but the franchise. But here's the thing, though, and 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 when you talk about well, it's it's you know rookie quarterback and 
McCready's a rookie head coach. Cliff Kingsbury is a rookie head coach. I'm not saying that the Arizona is, is better than Cleveland, but Arizona just beat Cleveland. Kyler so they're Mur- better than Cleveland. Then. Kyler Murray, I mean. Yeah, but Kyler Murray didn't dictate who their head coach was going to no, be didn't. neither. Yeah. So, uh, hey, man. This is what I w- this is what I was saying in the off season. This is what I was saying in the off season. You uh, look, I'm just I'm just saying, I'm I'm not trying to rub it in, but this is what I was saying. That you Please have, rub it in. You have to play the games like you signing a bu- I, I, and I tried to tell y'all. I know this from personal experience. Signing a bunch of players don't mean jack. It means nothing. The Eagles did the exact same thing in twenty in twenty eleven, and 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 if the Browns win the last two games, the Eagles and the Browns, those two teams will have finished with the exact same record, eight and eight. Typical Cleveland, you 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 make all the right moves to bring the right pieces in, and you 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 go with the wrong head coach. But you can't. To me, <laughs> to me, firing. I don't know if if firing Freddie Kitchens really does anything because. Number one, who are you gonna bring in the coach? To, who, who are you gonna bring the coach in? You, you don't want anybody. anybody. On, you don't want anybody, anybody but him. You don't want yeah. anybody on this coaching staff. Who, no. Who do you want? You don't want nobody on this coaching staff nobody. taking over the head reins. No. So who's, who's gonna be the Kev, coach? with 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 these type this type of talent and type of personalities you have on the team, you have to go get somebody that's accomplished something already. That who, that, that the there? players that will respect. I don't know. It, it's a lot of people that will will love to coach the Cleveland. Hell, go get Rex Ryan. No. Go get Rex. Rex Ryan can do a better job than what Freddie no. Kitchens is doing. No. You know Ron Rivera's out there. I mean. I'll take him. Anybody Ron. but Freddie Kitchens. Ron Rivera. It's clearly a lack of respect in that locker room for this man. And as your leader, you have to have respect as for the man that's calling the shots on the field. I, 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 I knew what this was a couple seasons or a couple of weeks ago when that that second Pittsburgh game. When he wore that T shirt, I knew dumb. I knew yeah. that this was it, it was more than an X's and O thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like this is this is something like you are idiot. We we understand why the team was undisciplined, and I understand that, you know, at a certain point that players need to take accountability for their actions. But when your leader Teams take their cues from leadership. When man, your leader is not being held for accountable for his actions when he doesn't hold himself accountable for his actions. When he said after he got caught with the shirt, you know what? I would wear the shirt again. As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, no, you are not head coaching material. Team, you're not. You're, you're not showing no, no, no remorse. You're not showing any corrective action. You're not showing any progress moving forward. You're literally repeating the same things over and over. So, no, you're not head coaching material. Say no. what you want to say, but teams take their cues from leadership. I don't care. Why do you think that? Why do you think the Patriots are so professional and always on time and always in? Because that's the way Bill Belichick operates. Absolutely. Even though you're a cheater. <laughs> on, hey, you ain't cheating. You ain't cheating. Well, come on, New England. He was like, "What? We got caught again." I was filming something. I was making a film oh, about one know. of our scouts. Just oh, don't worry wait, about wait it. Minute. They didn't. Oh, they didn't know that was against league policy. They didn't know. We we had people. no idea. Bill Belichick, no, you're no, too no, smart of a man. He's too slick. He's too slick. <laughs> what? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Check buzzer. So the Browns take the L, man, thirty-eight twenty-four, and uh, now they're six and eight. This has been a fun season, y'all. I just I, I want to know what I want to hear what Freddie's gonna say. Bye, Odell. Why you gotta say bye, uh, Odell? It ain't his fault. No, I'm I'm just saying like, he know, wants to I, leave. I don't like, know if he honestly, wants to be here anymore. Honestly, I, I'll tell you this, and there's gonna have to be a lot of soul searching on this team next year. And the only person that I would exclude from that would be Jarvis Landry. Odell's gonna have to do some soul searching mm-hmm. because. As, as as much as as I hated to you know lament on it, next year you gonna have to show up for OTAs. You yeah. gonna have to do something yeah. to show something that you moving forward. And I swear to God, and I did not notice this until I heard somebody say it, and then I went back, I looked at pictures. And Nick Chubb excluded I, too. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. I don't know what in the hell Baker was doing during the off season. But it's clear he wasn't doing anything football related. He was filming for those damn progressive. Uh, he got so many commercials. commercials. He got married, and as quiet as it kept, have you looked at Baker Mayfield? He's fat. He's fat. Yes, he mm-hmm. is literally out of shape. 
if you remember correctly, when Baker first got here, Baker was skinny. Baker was thin. He ain't put on no muscle. And he was more mobile than what he is He hasn't right put now. on any muscle. If you look at Baker Mayfield's face, he is fat. Six dollars. So, clearly, you – you, it wasn't just Odell that that didn't take the off season serious. Yeah. Oh, Baker didn't take the off season seriously. Think, think, think about think about the, the 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 three guys, the three guys that should have been the unquestioned leaders on this team. And look at their seasons: Baker Mayfield, trash; Odell Beckham Jr. and Miles Garrett. The three guys that should have been the unquestioned oh, leaders on this team. And look at their seasons. Mm-hmm. One of them done didn't show up. The other one, I don't know what's wrong with Odell. He just head cases, coaches, stupid. And Miles Garrett is smacking people over the head with helmets. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the leader of y'all football that's team right there. You, 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 review right now. you know what, you uh, what my uncle nickname is for Baker Mayfield? And I hit the floor away when he called you back. What? He said, man, if, if, if only way he can get the ball out, uh, 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 only way Mickey Mouse can get the ball out is <laughs> get to a receiver and see if he can get out the pocket. <laughs> he called him Mickey Mouse. <laughs> You know who I feel sorry for in all this? There is somebody at NFL Films who's going to have to make a highlight video of this season for Brown fans to purchase. Somebody's going to have to make a highlight video of this particular season. You know how to make the highlight video. Yeah. Even in, 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 in a season where you go 1-15, and 15, they make a highlight video showing it's gonna all the Nick Chubb. That's all it's going to be. Nick oh, Chubb. Yeah. Nick Chubb again. Somebody's got to make a highlight video this season. Guess what's coming up? Boy, Nick Chubb. I'll tell, I mean, you, I tell you another person you need to, need to exclude. Joe Schobert. Oh, he's, he's going too. No, Joe Schobert's out of here. Yeah, he's a free agent. Joe yeah. Schobert's out of here. Because they're not going to pay Joe Schobert what he, what, he, what he thinks. I he would keep you. Mama. Oh, nope. Man. I, I like Mac Wilson, I though, man. I like Mac Wilson. Man, I would but, keep But Joe this is the Schobert. question I got to ask y'all. And this is, a, this is a very serious, honest question, man. Because I'm, I'm starting to lean towards it. I don't know if I'm being biased, but I want to ask yeah. you. Everyone else, Lamar. No, that's not what I was gonna say. <laughs> if you had one, one, one choice between these guys, Lamar, uh, <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, Ty Gurley, uh, uh, Nick Chubb, and uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley. Who, who you, who you going with out of those four guys? Could have had Saquon Barkley. Who, whose way. offensive line do I have? I'm just saying, you got. No, choice to pick. no. Whose offensive line do that, I have? That is true. Yeah, yeah. Whose offensive line? Just, is just that's important. I'm. I, I think I'm honestly gonna say I'm. A, I'm going with. I think Nick Chubb is a more complete running back than any of Did those. Saquon guys. Barkley? Yes. No, I, I don't think. Yes. That. Nah, Nick dude. Chubb is good, but yes. Saquon nah, Barkley on the yes. next here's level. Here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy. I wouldn't even think about Saquon. For me, it was a toss up between Zeke and, and Nick Chubb. Saquon not even part of the discussion for me. Sorry. I, th- I take Nick Chubb over Saquon five out of five days of the week. Really. All day, every day. Nick, yes. Nick, no, as, yes. as a receiver look, on the backfield, look Nick, up, Nick look Chubb, up no, the no. two stat. Look up but last year's stats, stats when but he I, was fully but healthy. I'm saying, but I'm saying, to I me, will take, I look will take. Saquon, Saquon Barkley is is more dynamic than Nick Chubb. Saquon, you could do right. a lot more. Not on, by that much. Oh, yes, yes oh, you oh, can. Oh, no, you can do I will, a lot more with Saquon Barkley. And, and here's Y'all the think Nick Chubb ain't quick. He's quick. Here's the reason why. Is Nick Chubb more power? Is Saquon Barkley more powerful than Nick Chubb? Absolutely not. Ab- I don't. I don't see Saquon Barkley yeah. Ab- shove some dudes off. Absolutely not. I I mean, his legs Barkley is like tree trunks, yeah. man. Absolutely not. He's he, he's more me. agile than Nick than Nick Chubb. Do but, but doesn't it depend on your offense though, or it depend on what you may, maybe for your offense you need an actual running back? I, I understand that, but Saquon Barkley. This is who Saquon Barkley is. He's a make too many cuts type of running back. Like, he made one too many cuts. Well, Nick Chubb is going to make that one initial cut, and he's going to get wait, you with But he still makes people but, miss. Yeah, yeah, he, still he still makes people yeah, miss. Look, look, at the, look, at the, look at the yards. Look, look at the yards per carry. Nick Chubb is, is getting two more yards per carry than uh And I Saquon think the Giants, got a, the Giants have a worse offensive line. And this year. It's, it's not that much worse. This year at quarterback, they had e, <laughs> Daniel Jones and Eli Manning. <laughs> Name somebody on on, on the on the Browns offensive line besides Bantonio that that can start on another team. Oh, J. C. Treader couldn't start on another team. Austin Corbett. Who, who the hell is that? Corbett Phil? got traded. Corbett got traded. It, but who J- who is that dude named uh, Ham Tread- they had on the left tackle the, today? His he, his name was H A M M. But I'm saying I never J- heard of. I'm him. saying J. C. J. C. Treader couldn't start on another team. Maybe. 
Maybe. He came from Green Bay. He started in Green Bay. Maybe. But look, what what, what has he done this year? Well, just you, you, again, organization. Right. You right. go from Green Bay <laughs> to Cleveland. You know, what, you know what I'm saying? Year. So, I, but I don't think that. I, I, to, it, okay, if you're asking me, I'm taking Saquon Barkley because I know I can do a lot with Saquon Barkley. I can put Saquon Barkley in the backfield. I can line Saquon Barkley up in the slot. You can put Nick Saquon Barkley you all like over Swiss in your Army offense. Knife, man. <laughs> I I, I don't. I, I'm gonna I, say it gonna, again. I will take Nick Chubb. You gonna put Nick Chubb in the slot L- if you need to? Look at look at the receiving yards. Look at the catches in the receiving yards. Okay. They're they're they're. I mean, I get, it. Just it just depends on what kind of offense you want to run. You if you want a, a power running offense, then you 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 probably want to go with Nick Chubb first. But Saquon Barkley can run people over too. I've seen it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it to the Eagles. He can he can run people over. He can make people miss. So for me, I'm taking Saquon Barkley, and I feel bad that Saquon Barkley's career is being wasted in New York. It really is. He's too he's too talented to be to be playing for that trash team. That almost beat the Eagles, but they did. <laughs> but to me, I, I'm for me, I'm taking Saquon Barkley. But that's not to say Nick Chubb is not a great Nick Chubb's a great running back. I'm not I'm not trying to discount Nick Chubb. I'm just saying for my money, yeah, I'm taking Saquon Barkley. I'm sorry. Cause I know I can do a lot more with Saquon. I I think I can do a lot more with Saquon Barkley than I can with Nick Chubb. I know I I, I tell you this, I know I can I don't know if and 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 maybe I, y'all might think I'm wrong. I, to me, they're in the linebacker in this league that can hang, that can hang with Saquon Barkley in space. I don't think you can say the same thing about Nick Chubb. They're in the linebacker in this league that can that can run with Saquon Barkley in, in, in space. None. T.J. Watt couldn't do it. Jadavian Clowney couldn't do it. They're in the linebacker it, in this league that do, can run with do, T.J. Do, Saquon Barkley in space. I understand that, but it's about production. Nick Chubb Saquon Barkley give produces. You more, he give you more production than any of those other guys we name. <laughs> The production. I don't know. It's about production. The numbers say it. This, look, look, this take why I ain't Barkley second year, right? Yeah. Yes. Look at his numbers from last year. Look at Nick Chubb's numbers from last year. Look at his numbers from this year. Look at Nick Chubb's numbers from, from last uh, this year. Same with uh, Zeke. He done outproduced Zeke. He's outproduced Ty Gurley. He he done outproduced any over, over the past two seasons. Nick Chubb has been the best running back in the league. Okay. Numbers wise. All right. I mean, I, I'm just, I, I just, again, for me, make mine Saquon Barkley. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'd be mad with Nick Chubb. But for me, what I would want to do with my offense and how, how dynamic I don't want my offense to be, I'm taking Saquon Barkley. I agree with but, you. But the, but the fact of, of the matter is that, that here, I pro, as far as the Browns are concerned, I, I think the Browns, this is a, to me, it's a classic case of a team believing the hype about them absolutely a team believing their own hype okay so i'm gonna pose this question what are the biggest needs in the off season because this season particular is it's over it's over leadership. What are, what are the, yeah <laughs> leadership. Well, but, well besides that play a uh, personnel that's what we need oh uh, personnel wise we offensive gotta get a left line. tackle you we have to get a line. left tackle yes you get the offensive line should be priority one yes yeah, so that gotta be the number one pick you use left tackle Got to be. It, what about a free safety? What about some safety? Uh, yeah, because Randall might not be back yeah. next year, so you might you might need a safety too. But that offensive line got to be fixed. It has to. And, be. and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 100 type of person, man. Next year is all or nothing for Baker Mayfield, right? That or that mm-hmm. soon is all or nothing. Yep, I agree. Because you look like a fluke right now. I'm and I and and I kind of feel the same way about my quarterback. I feel the same way about Carson Wentz. Like I, I know he brought it back last week, and it, but hey, man, I'm, it's time to put up a shut up. But a lot of these young quarterbacks, you don't get you don't get a, a long time like a, you did before. As a backup in this draft, I would like to go after Jalen Hurts from uh, Oklahoma. You 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 know who I want to sign? Who I want the Browns to literally sign? Who? Teddy Bridgewater. Nah. He out there? Nah, nah, nah. He, he out gonna there? Stay, he gonna stay in he, New Orleans. He, he either that or he gonna go somewhere and start. Right. He's not. No. He gonna go somewhere and start, but that be will here. be a, a, a smart move. Nope, because because then you, what you do? You, what you gonna do? Get rid of back? He ain't coming here to back up Baker Mayfield. I think he better than Baker Mayfield. Well, then Baker, <laughs> uh, then, so, so you willing? Are you already willing to get rid of Baker? Bring it to the I ain't no believer, man. Okay. <laughs> he lost me, man. Give him one more. <laughs> so I mean, I'm not, right. I'm not. I'm not a believer either. Already, already, he lost me, man. The love fell with already. Him, already uh, I don't know. Look, man. he lost look, me. Look, look, look. He needs somebody to coach him 
and to develop him. Brad Field. No, I, he picked the head coach. He, <laughs> okay, well, that was a mistake. I understand that. But he needs somebody to coach him and develop him. Right now, our quarterback is literally a one-read quarterback. He needs somebody yeah. to tell him, stop acting like, yo, you know what, don't stink. That's stop, true. Stop and all stop this talking. Stop, stop, uh, yes. That's not going to happen. Shut up. That's you, just his personality. You you, you put not. more of a bullseye on your back, though, man. His personality. You see that shot to he took this today? <laughs> his personality is going to have to change. When he ran for that first down, because they was waiting the for him. Here's the thing, it's especially with the fan base, as evidenced by, by what Reggie is saying. When you do all that talking and then go out and don't and you produce. you don't produce. Who going to follow you? Odell, Landry, they all, they tuning Baker out right now, man. You're they doing all this are. talking and you're not producing. Because they was riding with they him was at the beginning of the season. Me, me and Baker, about, we about to break records, this, Think that, the this, third, Think all that. This, and this is how hard he trying, Kim, not to cut you off. Go ahead, you good. Baker is trying so hard and he know he losing his team where he has to go and say, well, a 80%. Odell is better than had. Odell don't need you to speak up for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You the one that's digging the hole for yourself. They not riding with you right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm throw some names out there and, and and you tell me how much talking that 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 you see these guys doing. Tom Brady zero. Aaron zero. Rodgers zero. Drew Brees zero. Pat Mahomes zero. Russell Wilson zero. Lamar Jackson zero. Deshaun Watson zero. I could go on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And these are quarterbacks out there producing and leading their teams to wins. All Tom, they do is motivate their teammates. They do is, Tom they Brady just, does his talking after he wins Super after Bowls. After he wins yeah. Super Bowls. Yeah. They don't, they don't go out there. Jimmy Garoppolo, another one. They don't go out there and, and, and do all this yip-yapping and talking and all this kind of stuff. And you, you See, I, I, I'm telling you, the whole thing, when he started with Hugh Jackson, that's what I was saying. Dude, shut up. Mm-hmm. Because you know why? Because well, you. We was eating that up. Man. You out there. Exactly, y'all was. And that was a problem. But guess what, you, though? You, guess what he was doing when he was doing that? He though? was winning. He was producing. <laughs> he was winning. <laughs> you can get away with it when you produce. He was winning. When you're not producing, you have yeah, to you shut up. You have to be quiet. You, you taunting the coach don't impress me. Because, like I always said, Hugh Jackson can't come out there and touch you. Taunt T.J. Watt or Khalil Mack like that and not be impressed. Because they can come out there and do something to you. Hugh Jackson can't come out there and do nothing to you. But all those quarterbacks I just named, they don't talk. You know, they ain't out there doing all this yabby yabby yabby, all this rah rah stuff. They just go out there and play football, man. And they produce. And they win Super Bowls. Brady, we already know how many he got. Aaron got one. Russell got one. Drew got one. Russell should have had two. Russell should have had two. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Carol. Russell's fault. <laughs> Russell should have had two. Pete Carroll's no, fault. No, no, the play. I'm, I'm sorry. Audible. I'm sorry. Pete Carroll called the play for you. I don't give a damn call if he audible. called the play. Call the audible. I am Russell Wilson. This is my team. You want me to do what at call, the goal line? Call the nah. Audible. See, what we fit to do is we fit to so hand this ball off and we fit to go home. So, hold on. Yes. You think. Yes, you, you think I, Russell Wilson got more credibility than, than, than Pete Carroll? Hell yeah. Yes. Oh no, man. Yes. Oh no, man. Let me tell you, it's yes. still Pete Carroll team, man. Who would have? Who would have been Pete Carroll team? Who would have been mad? Who? What? 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 See, what, what Seahawks fan? If he had called an audible and, and Marshall and scored, who gonna be mad? Well, nobody been mad. Exactly. And that's Russell Wilson. He but, ain't no rookie. But what I'm saying do. is, I don't think Russell. He's not that type of player to go against. Well, that's Russell's fault. Well, that's you know Russell's fault. That, that's what I'm. That's, that's what I mean fault. to say. He's that's not the type fault. of player that's to go fault. against his head coach. That's All right, let's, let's let's take a break because we got to get out, get back for Michaela Elmore. So let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back when we do come back. We will talk to uh, junior center forward Michaela Elmore from the Hopewell Loud and Chiefs. And so make sure you stay tuned for that. Eli, stay with us on. And the song's called In My Head by Chuki Beats. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad? Yep. Dog check.
All right, welcome back to the show. Uh, we are going to go right into it, right out of the break. Uh, join us right now on the phone line. She is a junior sen- center forward for the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains. Her name is Michaela Elmore. She joins us right now on the show. Michaela, how you doing? Good. How are you? We're doing fine. Thanks for taking time out of your night to join us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, no problem at all. Um, all right, so, um, you know, we, we, we were taking a look at some of your film. Um, we were really impressed by what you guys did last year um, and, and, and your love and your passion for the game. Can you tell us, what, what was your, your first introduction to basketball? When did you first get into basketball and be like, this is what I want to do? Um, it's probably like fourth grade and the YMCA is when I first started liking basketball. Mm-hmm. And then I never was really good until like seventh grade, so. <laughs> but did you, did you, did you play a lot against, uh, against a lot of the boys and, and, and kind of had to, I guess, cut your teeth doing that? Um, definitely. Yeah. I grew up playing with all the boys. My dad was the coach at the Y, so she always put me against the boys cause there wasn't really a lot of girls that came out. And I'm guessing your father didn't didn't take it easy on you, right? Yeah, he definitely did it. Was, was he was he harder on you because you were his daughter? Um, yeah, and he knew I had talent, so he wanted me to be great, and he just pushed me to do my best. So now let me ask you because I know the game is a little bit different. Um, do you study or have you studied any of? You know the, the 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 big men, or I guess I should say not even the big men. Some some of the women basketball players, players like you know maybe like Elisa Leslie or Rebecca Lobo. Have you studied any of those to try to maybe get some tips and pointers from them? I mean, some coaches like have told me I've played like some players. So, like I've always studied Candace Parker and all that, mm. but like I've always just played my own game. But like I've always looked up to them. Okay. Um, can can you talk about the, the responsibility, Kayla, that comes along with being a leader on that team and, and, and how you handle that? Um, definitely standing your ground and acting like a leader. Like you can't pick and choose one day you want to be a leader and then slack off the next. You have, always have to be a leader 100%. You have to take over and pretty much put yourself in charge. Are, are you more of a, um, a, of a vocal leader or, or do you kind of just prefer to lead by example? Um, a little bit of both. Like in practices, when things aren't going as smooth, I'll tell them that we need to pick it up. But then, like on the court, I'll lead by example more than vocal. You're not like Michael Jordan. You'll make him cry in practice, do you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Michaela, how do you balance um, staying on top of the game on the court with staying on top of the game um, um, in the, in your classroom as well? Um, equal time between both. I mean, we have practice every day after school. Then I come straight home, do schoolwork, the same routine every day. So it, it does it, it. I guess it doesn't as you progress because you're a you're a junior this year and and uh, you're you know one more year left in school. Correct. You are a junior. Correct. Were we right on that? Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm guessing it, it it's not getting any any easier. Um, do you have a lot of late nights? You know, staying up doing homework, studying things like that. Um, definitely. Yeah. They say junior year is your hardest year, and so far it's been pretty smooth. I mean, it's just a lot of hard work and concentration. Now, you guys finished uh, 21-5 and five last season. What's the key to maintaining that and keeping that success going for this season? Um, I mean, since we have a new transfer this year, it's just working together. Like, we lost one senior last year, and then our first regional run our first year, we lost, like, five seniors. So we're kind of a brand-new squad, but, like, we're all young. So it's just we all need to, like, come together and stop – trying to overplay one another do, do you prefer to kind of um being that you play in a post do you prefer to kind of have more of a finesse game or do you kind of like to get in there and, and mix it up a little bit um it depends on who we play like if we play a bigger team i'll get down in the post like i can play anywhere so whatever's open i take how, how much do you work on, on your your outside game do you do you like to take a lot of threes or is that something that you even want to have in your repertoire um, yeah, I've definitely shot a lot. Like we have a court at our house. I mean, me and my brother shoot a hundred shots every day in the summer. So that's a big thing. But I also work in the post cause that's where I mainly play for AAU. How, how many, um, how many brothers do you have, Michaela? I have two. How, how often do you beat them? Um, I mean, my older brother, he, well, I don't really see him that often, but my little brother, we play every once in a while in the front yard. How old is he? How old is your little brother? 14. Oh yeah, you got to give him the business. Yeah, you got to. 
Yeah, you gotta let him know what's going on. Um, Michaela, uh, Michaela Elmore from the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains is our guest. Can you talk about your family, Michaela, and and how they've helped you get to this point and what their support means to you? Um, I my dad Melvin, my mom Sarah, my little brother Donovan, and my dad's always been big in the basketball, and my mom's from where I go to Hopewell, where I go to school now, and my little brother he's always looked up to me. My dad's always pushed us and. My mom's always kept us on track, so they both complement each other well to help us succeed. Now, I, I know, you know, be, because you guys have had a lot of success, um, you're obviously the leader on that team. Talk about, you know, the things that comes with that just, you know, in your everyday, you know, walk through school or whatever. How do you deal with that, and, and how important is it for you to handle yourself, um, you know, accordingly just as you're walking through the halls at school? Um, I mean – like people say, you have haters everywhere and you have people that will talk bad about you. But like just going through every day and minding your own business, not getting into trouble and just staying on task and worrying about you is the biggest thing pretty much. Absolutely. Now, you um, you just took a visit uh, to Dayton, I believe, correct? It was just Dayton you just took, took a visit to? Yes. Okay. So now, have you had any conversations with other schools that you can at least that you can tell us about it? And, and have you narrowed down your choices at all? Um, yes, I've talked to a lot of schools, and no, I haven't really narrowed it down yet. Like, I've told some schools no, but, like, I haven't dropped, like, my top five or ten yet, but we're still working on it. So how, how, how I guess, um, is that is that process nerve-wracking for you, the recruiting process? Because I'm sure it's, it's fairly new to you, um, talking to coaches and having coaches maybe come to your house or having to go take visits. Does it get kind of nerve-wracking sometimes? You just kind of feel like you want it to be over with? Um, not really over with yet, but I mean, my first visit, I was really nervous compared to now. Like, I know, like, what we're going to talk about, what to expect, what to do, like, just the questions to ask, so I'm ready. So, um, how in, involved, I, I'm sure pretty involved, but w with your parents, I'm, I'm sure they have input on, on what schools they like, what schools they don't like. How, how much do you take that into consideration, or, or do you kind of feel like, this is the decision that I, I got to make on my own, and I, I value their input, but I'm going to make this decision on my own ultimately. Um, to be honest, they're 100% open. Like, they don't really – they talk about, like, some pros and cons of the school, but, like, they don't tell me, like, where I can and can't go. Like, they say this is my decision. I'm going to be there for the next four years, so they want me to pick the best choice for me. And, like, they're out of high, they're out of high school and college, so this is my turn. So – we at now. I'm going to ask because this is this is kind of a tradition on this show. If if for those that they're listening for the first time that don't know, it's kind of a tradition on this show because we have someone on our staff who is an alumni of the school. Have you had any kind of contact at all with Bowling Green? Um. Yes. Are they on the no list? Um. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> It's not looking good, Eli. It ain't looking good. Oh, ever. come on, McKay. <laughs> <laughs> nah. They're close to home. I mean, I visited there, but I haven't narrowed it down yet. Mm, I don't know, Eli. You might want to get ready. I'm going to have to talk to somebody in that yeah, uh, scouting man. department, man. Listen, right? <laughs> Michaela, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate your time tonight, and uh, we hope you have a good week um, at school, and, and good luck the rest of the way. We're going to do our best to get out there to see one of you guys' game. And, again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. All right, thank you for sure. No problem. Have a good day. You too. All right, bye-bye. Michaela Elmore of the Hopewell Loudon Chieftains. He's on our top 25 junior center forward. That girl got game. Let me tell you something about that young woman. That girl got yeah, game. Yeah, she got game. She got game. She got a lot of game. I think she averaged 21, 22 points a game last year as a sophomore. So she's only a junior this year. And she's center. She, uh, her natural position is center. I believe she's like 6'1" if I'm not mistaken. Her natural position is center. Um, but um, she plays, we, we, you know, power yeah, forward. Yeah, I got to get her to Bowling Green. <laughs> I mean, you know. She, so, hey, she, she, said, four hey, one she, she a 419. She so, said it's close to home. Hey, it's, yeah, it is close to home. She's close to home. So, you know, maybe, possibly, kind of, sort of. Yeah, I mean, she need to know. stay in the four one nine. Yeah. So you know, yeah. come on, come on, be a falcon. Let me take a look. Let me take yeah, a look. Don't yeah, don't. Me I mean, don't really go up to that school up you know up north or I seventy five. You know Toledo. You don't want to go. Oh, there. she go to Toledo. You don't want to go there with, with Soleil Barnes and, and Sophia Fornick. Come on, son, and Lexi Lance. Oh, she go to Toledo. It's gonna be a wrap for the whole Mac Mac conference. 
uh, 21.3 points per game last year. 21.3 points per game, 12 rebounds, uh, about four steals and two blocks per game is what she averaged as a sophomore. I'm just saying. Usually they get better, so those numbers might even be, be better this year. She got hope with a lot on, this, on the right track. We appreciate it coming on. Thank you so much, Michaela. I don't know, E. That, that didn't sound too – ain't sound too convincing to me, Listen, brother. I'm just – That sounded know. like that was a polite answer. That sounded like, like yeah. yeah, they on the no list. I, and I usually don't do that. Just sort of – I usually don't be like, yo, did you say yes or no? But I just I, I just want to get it out there. I usually don't do not do that. I usually don't do the duty, you know, are they – are they on or are they off? I don't usually do that, but you know, I just it just kind of came out. Sounded like I'm, she I'm, was a, like, I'm gonna uh, see where Hope Hopewell is. Wait, Hopewell yeah. Loudon. Hopewell, yeah. Sounds like it's. That's I think a ne- right, man. Yeah. Nah, yeah, mm. not really, kind of. Yeah, that's nah. on uh, Bascom, Ohio. Yeah, ba- Bascom, yeah. Uh, let's see. So it sounds like that she she might be leaning towards that. Yeah, yeah maybe not. So we thank Michaela Elmore for joining us. Ashley is show. right up the road from uh, Bowling. Like right she up the road from Bowling home. Green. Yeah, that's uh, north. Yeah, that's like Northwest Ohio. That's sounds like she still said nah, nah. Here's here's my thing, and and I'm and you know a lot of these mm. these young ladies, you know they they're going through. And she's only a junior, so she got a whole another year to go. That's right. That's um, another year I can convince her to come be a Falcon. I mean, you know. She's gonna grow grow some more, grow taller. Yes. Too. Yeah. She, she, and and honestly, and and I'm really surprised that sometimes that some of these colleges that that these young men and, and women pick, and, and no disrespect to the colleges, like okay, I, I Destiny Lale, for example, at East Lake North, that young lady averaged 30 a game last year. She's going to Cleveland State. State right. No disrespect to Cleveland State. Let me just make that clear, but I just think like some of these, you know, I, I feel like she's talented enough to to go to a a Tennessee or a UConn or a Stanford or a South Carolina, some of the, the the powerhouses in women's college basketball, Old Dominion, some teams like that. And 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 you know, I mean, it's good that she's staying at Cleveland State, I guess. It, it's and I'm not, I'm not, I, I promise, I'm not knocking it, because you know what we say on this show, man, you get a full ride somewhere, go. If you're good enough, they'll find you. If you're good enough. But I just got a feeling that that someone with Michaela's talent and Michaela's size. She'll probably be getting some calls from, from, from some of the big boys. And if she doesn't, fine. Pick your college, go to your college, and show out. That's all. Show out. And and make them wish they would have recruited you in college in the first place. So we thank Michaela Elmore for joining us on the show. I don't know, E. You ain't looking good, my brother. It's all right, though. You know, you, you guys got, hey. You got Joey Formani from from St. Ed's. You I know, know, I was happy about that. BG. Yep, yep. You got a St. Ed's player out there. Now you got Ryan Malloy. You got Joey Formani. We, hey, we come on, come hey. on. We, we, about to, we about to come back. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I mean, you, know. <laughs> you just gotta stay humble. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, some of the scores here. Uh, I'm gonna just go back a little bit. This is from uh, this is girls basketball. Let's go back. To basically from yesterday, actually, from uh, from some of these scores, Shaker Heights uh, loses to Mayfield, fifty to forty seven. Uh, East Lake North uh, beat Euclid, fifty seven to forty nine. Um, Illyria got beat by Solon, seventy to forty six. Oh my God! Yeah. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me. Uh, and Worcester beats Brunswick, fifty five to fifty two. So those are some of the scores from the uh, the Greater Cleveland Conference. Uh, I'm going to move on to the uh, the Lake Erie League. Hold on one second here. Um, sorry, got to move it around. All right, so uh, we're going to go back a little bit here on the calendar as well. We're going to go back to Thursday, December twelfth. Just uh, one uh, game that was on the schedule that I saw there, uh, Lutheran East uh, won over LRA. I'm not sure who LRA is, but Lutheran East won 67 to 31. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me. Right. Um, Let's take a quick look here. I'm going to jump over to – I was trying to look for the Senate League scores, but I didn't see the Senate League scores anywhere. Trying to look over there and see him. Hmm. 
All right, so we'll just have to skip that because I was trying to look for the center league score, but I couldn't see him for some reason. Uh, oh, James Rose been balling. Yeah. They, yeah. they got a kid on their team named Big Ticket. He he throwing alley oops off the backboard I to know himself. Who talking about I researched that kid, <laughs> but we can't we can't pr- um, preview anybody yet. Right, right, right. right. We can't, we, I can't. He, I can't, he I can't threw an alley oop off the backboard and windmilled it to himself, Phil. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Don't want to give it all away, Red. <laughs> Speaking of that, yeah, we are um, definitely working on our boys' uh, top twenty-five for basketball. Um, so we'll be. Um, putting that out here soon. Uh, I know. It's, it's, it's just be patient with us, man. It's coming. It's coming soon. Shout out to Laurel, man. They they got one on uh, yesterday on the uh, Illyria Catholic, eighty-two to sixty-two. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's 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 twenty points. Either. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me. Come on, Mister Producer. What's going on? Sorry about that. Yeah, man. man. You still you still you still know you still kind of shook from the, you know, from the whole Michaela. Crushing your dreams, type. Yeah, I need to have a drink right now. Yeah, Wait, who who crushed his dreams? Michaela Elmore. Yeah, mm-hmm. cause she yeah. she. Was no. Yeah, that was a maybe. I'm gonna go to BG. No, that yeah. wasn't a maybe. That was a no. That was a polite no. Damn it, well. <laughs> that was yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe. Well, not. Bowling Green. Yeah, that's right down the street. Yeah, that's a nah. Okay. Mm, bruh. Nah. All right, let's switch gears a bit, man. So, um, the fire sale has begun. Corey Kluber traded. Francisco Lindor almost on his way out. Uh, I don't know. Man. I don't know what to tell you. I'm a Yankees fan. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 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 really, 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 really tired of this ownership group. I'm really Ain't tired. Ain't that gonna of change it. until he sells the team, which he's not. He will die with this team. Okay. My thing is, you know, we we saved $30 million over the next two years. And I just want to see exactly what's going to happen with this $30 million. Is he going to reinvest it? Or is that $30 million going to quietly slip off the books (laughs) into his pocket? And, you know, when we add our usual 30 something outfield year old outfielder, that heyday was back in the early two thousands or the late two thousands or whatever. I mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but do you remember when we signed Nick Swisher? Yes. Do you remember when we signed Carlos Gonzalez? Oh my God! Earlier this year, like Cargo was still hitting hitting balls in Colorado or something. Like forty five. Who Carlos? <laughs> <laughs> so that that's my question: is what's going to happen with the money now? If he reinvests this money, then maybe. I'll say we won this trade, or maybe I'll say the trade was decent enough. But right now, it looks like no. we just got fleeced, and he just wants to save some money. I think somebody told me they did the calculations. I think somebody on the Twitter but did the calculations. Come on, man! You you can't come on. You you can't tell me that all we could get for Corey Kluber was the Lionel DeShields Jr. and some 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 second rate pitcher. Come on, man. That's that can't be got. all we could. That, that can't be all. It was, a, it was a, it was a cash grab. That's all it was. The 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 Texas Rangers literally told the Indians, "We won't give you prospects, but we will take the money off of your books. We they are going to pay all of Kluber's contract. The Indians are not. They they don't have wow. to pay anything with Kluber. So right. I promise you, this was a money dump. This That's wasn't anything right else." But a money dump. That's, That's all it was. Right there. But it's not really surprising, though. Not really surprising. Man, I missed the late 90s, early don't 2000s you? Cleveland Indians, don't man. Don't you? Why? Dick Jacobs was just a sheep. Yeah, he was. But at least we was winning games and putting had a, points up. We had we a had, competent general manager. Yeah, yeah, we had man. John Hart. We was bringing players in left and right in the late 90s keep, or the early 2000s. We was 2000s. trading players. I keep telling you. <laughs> Dick Jacobs was just as cheap. Jim Tomey left. Manny Ramirez left for the same reason. Because we couldn't pay. The only difference we was. Still was producing. The only difference was, you know, back in the day, Dick Jacobs, he had at least had, we at least were comparable to what, you know, because right. mm-hmm. we're not going to. There's no way 
even if we were to offer a contract, it would be something laughable. Like it would be laughable like that four year or six year, a hundred million dollar contract extension we offered him in 2016, which he smartly laughed at. Like, boy, you gonna give me a hundred million. Why would I do that when a few years I'm gonna be making three or four hundred million dollars? Exactly. Exactly. So we can give him a hundred million, he's gonna go somewhere else and get three hundred or four hundred million. What you if, think he fit to do? A pitcher just got three hundred and twenty four million dollars. What do you think somebody like Francisco Lindor is gonna get? If a pitcher got three hundred and twenty four million dollars. Nothing under two hundred. Nothing under three hundred. <laughs> Nothing under three hundred. I want three hundred million dollars. I'm I want three seventy five. I'm looking up something real quick. RJ, I'm son, I'm buying you a glove. Uh, I told you. I keep telling people, <laughs> man. I told you. Y'all I better get y'all coach. boys involved in some baseball. <laughs> I told you. Because if you want to go where the money go, you better pick up a bat and ball. Cause no salary bad, cap. No old salary man. Cap. Nope. I'm just looking up something real quick. I told you. I told you. If you have a young son, and, 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 and Erica said that, that R.J. like baseball. He do, he do like baseball. Oh, yeah. Well, good, you need to good. go ahead. Yeah, good. you need to put that in his head right he like, now. He like baseball. Right now. You need to. You need to. You're, you're, if you have a young son, teach your young son how to play baseball. I love football. I, I love football. But if I had a son, baseball, I could do it. Yeah, baseball Man, was listen. my game growing up. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I would teach my son to play soccer. Oh, they get paid. They, they, they get paid get too. Paid so Ooh, much wait. money. I had no idea. If I had known that, and I stopped growing, I would have kept playing soccer. Oh, I'm too short to play football or baseball or basketball. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna play soccer, and I'm gonna go across this pond and I'm gonna make about four hundred million dollars. Or golf. They make a lot of money too. Or golf. Yeah, you, golf you can finish like sixty something and still pull like hey. a forty thousand, fifty thousand yeah. dollar check. It's crazy. All right, so I, I'm just going to – I'm going to – see, and here's the thing. When, I, when, I, when, you, when you talk about the Indians and them, the, the market that they're in. It's a mid-level market, like middle of the road. Oakland, Athlet- o- Oakland Athletics does the same thing. Didn't stop, didn't stop the, the Kansas City Royals. Didn't stop them. True. Kansas City Royals won it. Cincinnati has a higher payroll than us. Well, they signed wow. Joey Votto to you. Wow. You can't tell me. Yeah. Wow. You can't tell me really? Cincinnati. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Cincinnati has a higher payroll they than do. us. They you do. can't You're tell right. me Cincinnati's a bigger market than Cleveland. It's now, not, usually, usually the big market teams are the ones that win. Because if you go up the past 10 years, you had – so starting last year, you had Washington – or this year, Washington, Boston, Houston, Chicago, Kansas City, San Francisco, Boston, San Francisco, St. Louis – San Francisco and then the Yankees. That's a past ten World Series winners. So, Kansas City, maybe St. St. Louis and Cleveland are about the same too. So somewhere in there, you had a couple of mid market teams that say, you know, we can. Go. That's talent. That's scouting. That's knowing what players to let go, what players to keep. This great this farm this, systems. Yes, we've had our opportunities though. We, this, can't, this we right. can't sit up here and say they, we have. They have three they one. They didn't cash in. The window was open. The window was open. They were up three to one. And they got slammed shut right on that middle finger. <laughs> Dolis is up putting. He put boards on the window. Mm-mm, don't come back in here. They were red. They were. It was. It was there. Up three. We needed one win. One. Four championship. That damn rain delay. That damn rain delay. <laughs> damn it. Ben Zobras said <laughs> that hit by Zip. Ben Zobras. Yep. Man, when we grounded that ball out for that last out, man, y'all don't know how. Y'all don't know how how how, how yeah, mad dude. we I was there. Man. Me and Phil was down there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I felt the same way. We saw the Cub fans winning. Yeah, yeah, high five. Yeah, high five. Did y'all see that Indians fan knock that Cubs fan out, though? Actually, we were standing right by that Cubs fan that we got knocked out. Yeah, that's yeah, just I saw it. that's just yeah, I that's saw all it. it is though. That's good. That's good. That's good managing. It's good manage management. Good managing on the field. Good management in the front office. Knowing who to keep. Knowing who to let go. I mean, but look at the names of the of the managers though. That 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 when these are not like, you know, George. I started two thousand. Joe Girardi, Bruce Bochy, Tony La Russa, Bruce Bochy again. John Farrell with the Boston Red Sox. And then Bruce Bochy again. Bruce Bochy's got three. Yeah. 
Ned Yost with Kansas City. Ned Yost? Yeah. Who the yeah. hell is catcher. that? Yeah. It was a former catcher. Yeah. yeah. Joe Madden, A.J. Hinch with Houston in 2017. Former catcher. Yep. Alex Cora and then Dave Martinez last year. Mm-hmm. We got everything. Kev, we got the pitching. We got we the, had the pitching. No, yeah. we still got it. Okay. We had We the still got I it. I don't like Terry Francona. What? I don't like I don't it seems like I you don't know who, why? Because he always playing that National League small ball. And in the playoffs he always burned his best right. arm. Right. And off. he only goes to a three uh, a three man rotation that in the his, playoffs. That was his mistake in 2016. Mm-hmm. That's what that was. You know who I would like to see get a chance, you know, for the run this team? Sandy Alomar Jr. Why not? Nah, I'm cool on Sandy. I'm cool on Sandy. Why not? That'd be like asking Bernie Kosar to come back and coach the Browns. Nah. No, Why not? Nah. No. <laughs> say that. Anybody better than Freddie Kitchens? I'm cool. I'm why cool. not? Let us do it. Let you the fans why? vote on the play. You know why? Because fans and the media in this city will be much less apt to hold Sandy Alomar's seat to the fire because he's Sandy Alomar Jr. Ooh, speak the truth there. Just like if Bernie Coles, I would look at Bernie Coles, I would get so many passes in the city they ain't from. Okay, say for instance, uh, Terry Fran- Francona gets fired in two years. Who do you think gonna Who do you think gonna step up? Hopefully not Sandy, Sandy Alomar. It's gonna be Sandy Alomar Jr. I hope Jr. not. I hope oh, not. It's gonna be a rebuild. I hope not. I don't think nobody has gotten more passes than Jason Garrett. You can't. I mean, I mean, passes do we get? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Quad Brothers, not Quad Brothers. Um, Jason Garrett is awesome. Pop up on my screen. Jason Garrett is, is you know, did, did okay today. Screw you, LA Rams. You know they ain't going nowhere, Kev. They, they, they. I'm saying we need so, them to keep losing. We need the Cowboys I, I, I to keep losing. I'm about to say, sorry to, 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 to say it to you, though, but they're going to beat y'all the final week of the season. No, they're they're going to lose the first round of the playoffs like they always do. Yeah, same old stuff. <laughs> you bring that negative energy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just – I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, let's do it. Let's take a break. We'll come back at 8 o'clock. Ali winning from the Illyria Catholic Panthers will join us. So let's go ahead. We'll get out. We'll come back. We'll talk to Ali. Uh, Eli, what's the name of the song? The name of the song is called Stacking by the Beat Cartel. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad?
Welcome back to the show. Ali Winnen of the Illyria Catholic Panthers coming up in a couple minutes. He had one job, St. Uh, Rams. He had one job, man. <laughs> one. And couldn't get it done. Cowboys beat him down. I ain't going to lie. S- Super Bowl hangover, man. And look at Atlanta beating the 49ers. And who and guess who got it? Guess who scored it? Julio. Free Julio. Yeah, he got to go. Yeah. He got to get out of there, man. He got to get out of there. So the, well, let me go with some of these uh, NFL scores real quick here while we're waiting on Allie uh, to call in. Hold on a second here. All right. So we already know Browns lose to the Cardinals 38-24. Uh, Philly over Washington 37-27. The Falcons beat the 49ers 29-22. The Jags come back and beat the Raiders in the final game in Oakland, 20 to 16. Uh, Vikings smash the Chargers, 39 to 10. The Packers beat the Bears, 21 13, and the Giants beat the Dolphins, 36 to 20. Uh, New England beat um, the Bengals, 34 to 13. Houston beats Tennessee, 24 uh, 21. The Bucks and uh, Jameis, J- hey Eli, famous Jameis, eight and four touchdowns, son. Bucks beat the Lions 38-17. How many Chief? passing yards Mariota had, yeah? Zero. The bench. Uh, zero. Zero. <laughs> Chiefs over the Broncos 23-3. Uh, and the Seahawks beat the Panthers 32-24. And, again, the Cowboys beat the Rams 44-21. to Yeah, Mar- Marcus had zero yards. None. <laughs> the bench. I'm just saying, man. You don't have to j- give James his pride. He, he 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 earned himself a new deal. Yeah, he did. He's getting a new deal from Bruce Arians. Yeah, we earned crap. Tampa, if Tampa Bay had a better defense, they'd be a. You know what I mean? That their defense is terrible. You know, Marcus is just going to be a backup from now on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I don't it. Think for Marcus. He get another starting job. That's it for Marcus. But the Buccaneers <laughs> are the Buccaneers are seven and seven. They two wins away from being in the playoffs. Yeah, should have hired Bruce Arians. Yep. He wanted to come here too. Chris Godwin, a stud, dog. I gotta give that man his props. Mm-hmm. He been bought. He bought out this year. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, sometimes it's just, you know you have one side of the ball that don't show up, and Tampa is their defense. If their defense wasn't so terrible, Tampa might have ten wins by now. Yeah. The Lions are three ten and one. Hmm. Seriously, man. I know I said it before on this show. Is there a quarterback that underachieves more than Matthew Stafford in this Absolutely entire league? Absolutely not. He's a stat stuffer. He hasn't played none this year, though, guys. Oh, that's right. He did get hurt, yeah, didn't he? he got hurt back in, like, week four no, or five. Whatever. He still ain't won the <laughs> Yeah, their quarterback now is Jeff Driscoll. Yeah. Still ain't won a, still ain't won a division Big title. trash. That whole squad is trash. So, Chase Young might actually go back to school. Smoke. I saw reports that Smoke screen. I mean, he don't want to go to the Giants. Right. Go to the Giants. Nah. <laughs> Good. Nah. Good. Cincinnati, please take him if you come out. No. Cincinnati's going to take Joe Burrow. Nah. Yeah, they're going to take Joe Burrow. But Thank you. Chase Young don't want to go to the Giants. That's clear. That's clearly what that but tells I think, me. I think Miami locks up the number two spot because the Giants beat Miami today. So I think Miami oh, okay. might be a number two. I'd rather go to the yeah. Giants than Miami. I don't want to go to Miami. South Beach? No. Nah, if I got if I got if I got to suck, South if I got to play on a team that suck, I'm gonna do it in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I don't touch South Miami. Beach. I, mean, I don't want to touch Miami. I don't want South that. Beach. I mean, at South least Beach. at least I know I got Saquon and some other weapons on the other side of the ball. That they ain't got nothing, Mike. What am I doing? What, this the only thing I'm gonna do is go to South Beach. That's it. I mean, he, they got Devontae Parker. He a he nice a, receiver. He a defensive end, man. He you know what I mean. He just got to get to the quarterback. That's all they need him to do is get to the quarterback. South Beach, Phil. You 21 playing on South Beach if, off of your rookie deal? No. Come on. If man. I have to go to a team and and, and suck, <laughs> it might as well be in South Beach. Not not New York. Not New York. <laughs> True. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, hey, 
Do your thing. Why you think Jim, Jimmy Bucket said I'm going over to the Miami Heat? You know, I don't really want to because of the culture of the <laughs> Miami Heat organization. But he had yeah, Embiid and Ben Simmons. You see my face. So okay, think about then. it. You can either you can either suck in Miami, or you can suck in Cincinnati, Washington, or New York. I'm cool on all that. Give me Miami. Yeah, give me Miami. Take my town to South Beach. Cause you, you and, and those other teams he named, Phil. You know what the weather's like in November and December, and mm-hmm. uh, to be on a four and and yeah, nineteen in December. It's football. Do you want to play supposed to be on cold. a team four and it's nine football. in December? Stop being soft. Four, oh, it's not supposed even four and nine. Two and ten mm-hmm. in December. I'm just I don't want to play in that game. I am just saying. Give me you a December I mean? game. At least if I, once, once we get beat down, I, maybe I rack up a couple of sacks. <laughs> rack up a couple go, of sacks. I'm going to go sit, to the beach. Go yeah. sit right on the beach. Go to the beach. Uh-huh. Go on the beach and think about it. Man. Yeah. It's like, mm, I had a good game yep. today. In I December. Know, I don't know what about everybody mm-hmm. else. I'm getting drunk. In December. December 15th, I'm on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Soak it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. You know, I'm in my uh, live feed right now. Shout out to Tiffany Ginn, Ted Ginn's uh, sister. Oh, what's up, Tiffany? How you doing, Tiffany? Uh, Willie Little John just joined here. Willie. Hey, hey, Willie. You know, we had, we had to get a rook to business, man. You know what I mean? He had a good season, though. He had a good season. First round <sighs> playoff exit. That's what happened when you do all that talking. Oh. Mm-hmm. Was it a first round playoff exit? Oh, yeah, he was out. <laughs> oh, he out of there. He I'm gone. sorry. I'm sorry. He gone. Mm. So we're going to try to uh, meet up with, with, with Coach Riz. I reached out to Coach Riz today because we still got to give him his belt. Speaking of, of Do positions. we have to give him his belt? Yes, we do. We do have to give him his belt. He won it fair and square. He won it, man. He won it fair and square, man. So you'll, you'll be vacating that belt for a few months as Coach Riz gets to parade around with it. So we'll be meeting up with Coach Riz. Hopefully this weekend we'll, we'll meet up with Coach Riz. And then I have to ha- I have to hand him the belt, right? Yes, you do. Yes. Okay. Absolutely you do. Exactly. Yes, we will not uh, be. Yeah, I mean, at yeah. least I won. Yeah, well, I was in second place. I beat you and beat you. You did. You. Yeah, you I mean, did. That's right. But you know what they call second place? First loser. Mm-hmm. First place Thank loser. You. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, still waiting I on do. Allie winning the call in. Yeah. Um. So whenever she calls in, we'll chop it up with her. Can I ask y'all a question? Yes, yes, sir. Do y'all know how many rushing attempts Nick Chubb had in the second half? I don't even want to know. Anyone want to take a guess? No. More than six? No. Oh, my God. What is wrong with that dude? Anybody want to take a guess? I mean, when you're down by three touchdowns, you can't run the ball no more. <laughs> One. Really? You One? can't? Yes. How many did Kareem Hunt have? I don't know. We was down by three touchdowns. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess you can't. Guess you shouldn't get down by. Here's, my, here's my question though: If that's the only way that your offense is moving the ball, then why wouldn't you run the ball anyway? I mean, would would you rather run the ball, get down, score, maybe possibly try to come back, or are you just gonna sit there and watch Peyton Baker incomplete passes all day? Yeah. Phil, this is the same man that we seen uh, in the Seattle game, third and goal, and, uh, and Nick Chubb was on the sideline. Bro, this is the same <laughs> person that we saw on oh that, boy. that game. Was it was it St. Louis that we did? Was it St. Louis when it was fourth and nine and he ran a draw play? Yeah, Rams, <laughs> Erica, no, Erica Logan has officially jumped in my uh, oh, uh, here we go. feed. Here we I'm go. waiting on the comments. Come here on, Erica. Go. Come on with it. Here we go. I mean, what what, Come what on is with it. what is there for Erica to say? It, it, it's so bad, man. I'm sitting there watching the song <laughs> with my son RJ. He said, "Nick Chubb don't deserve this." <laughs> hey, how old is your son, He's man? Seven. <laughs> Yo, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Salute, don't, RJ. RJ, Salute. don't none of us deserve <laughs> this. <laughs> we don't deserve this. RJ, get out now while you can, little homie. <laughs> go ahead, Eric, go Eric ahead, throw. Throw them black and yellows all us out. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, 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 pull him black, out, Erica. Black and yellow. Yeah. Don't, don't let him. Do not subject that young man to Shout that. out to the Cleveland Browns whole entire organization. Oh, okay. they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they did <laughs> bless us, man. Shout out, to the, <laughs> hey, shout out to the whole Cleveland Browns organization. Hey, they, they got some new uniforms coming out in 2020. They're they going to give us a brand new pair. Of, the, the ones they get, we're getting the same ones also. Oh, okay. They, they did. No, 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 real, real, real talk. They, they did. No, I, 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 I give them up. They did. They, they blessed the 88 Street Browns. Yeah. Shout out to them for doing that. They no did doubt. do that. They did do it up nice. They did. 
So I ain't all the way dog, y'all. But oh, I am. I am. <laughs> you're trash. You're garbage. You're garbito. Your your owners are tra- Jimmy. Jimmy. Where you at, Jimmy? I would like to hear from Jimmy Hat. You know who I really want to hear from? I want to hear from John Dorsey. That's who I want to hear from. What? Wait, what is he going to say? I don't know. You need to say something. The words I really want to hear is, you, you know, you sit down at the podium. We've decided to relieve Freddie Kitchens of his duties. Moving forward, whoever's the head coach, I don't care who it is. That's the guy he picked, though, so he going to show some pride and give him you one know, more year. You know, John Dorsey, did, you know, doggone well, John Dorsey did not pick him. Who picked him? Baker Mayfield I picked I mean, him. but Dorsey still had to agree to that. Yeah, Baker did abolish for him, but you, I mean, right. a rookie uh, a rookie quarterback got that much pull? That's like what the Cavs did with LeBron, then turned around and tried to blame it on LeBron. But, but it's LeBron, though. We can, I mean, that's understandable from LeBron. LeBron read, ran his head coach out when he was first when a, when he was a what rookie. has Baker Mayfield done? What did LeBron do? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, it's the same. Right. It was the same. It's the same situation. I mean, as soon as LeBron came in, the Cavs gave him free reign to the organization. Correct. Yes, that's yeah, true. Okay, right. and as soon as Baker got fear, you did right. we not give him the free reign and the keys you, to the organization? Yes, we did. All right, right. then. But right. the difference is, LeBron took the Cavs from a laughing stock to one of the most entertaining, profitable, most watched teams in the entire NBA. But we didn't know that at the time, did we? No. That's what we we expected. That's what we expected. Yeah, hey, expectations and reality are two different things. That's what I'm saying. One delivered and one hasn't. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's only been two years. In his second year, well, Well, we did. Did we go to the playoffs LeBron's second year or was his third year? It was his third third year. year. Okay. From laughing stock number one pick to playoffs in three years. His first season, I think we went 40 and 42. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember them days, man. I'm just saying. And 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 it's what I said. Like, and yet that man is still gets hated on in this city. And I don't. I'll never understand. I'll never. You want to know why? I'm, I'm getting ready to tell you why. I'm getting ready to tell you why. You want to know why? Because I had to admit this to myself the other day, Kev. I literally had to man up and literally admit to myself. <laughs> You know what I'm about to say. I'm still hurt, damn it. <laughs> I am hurting. Kev, I am hurting. Not even from the first time. You know I forgave him the first time. You the know I still time. loved him. You know I forgave Kev, I am over here hurting. I am watching this man ball out in L.A. Yeah, having he, fun, high-fiving each other, doing the dances. Yeah, I thought he was done. AD over here balling out, dropping 30 in the But Lepin, he said he'll never leave us again. <laughs> dropping <laughs> threes it's, on it's, people. It's like this, Kev. It's like the, 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 bitter, uh, the bitter ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Yes. They know they can't do better yes. than what was just left. We knew we, we would never be and able then, to get another and, LeBron James. And then you James. go get somebody prettier than us? <laughs> you go get somebody. Somebody, yeah. no, I but want you, you to, to suffer. The Lakers. But now, let's, but now let's. If, if, I, if I was a single, mo- I would put my baby daddy on child support <laughs> right now. You went and got found somebody that looked better than me. Oh, you on child support right now. <laughs> but but here's the thing, and we talked about this last week. You 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 weren't here, Phil. Ooh, we talked about this last man. week, where you have you have guys on this team right now including the guy I've been standing up with, Kyle Sexton, I believe he's one of them, talking about they don't like John Bylan because we spend too much time watching film and too much time on fundamentals. What are you talking about? Too much time on fundamentals. And did you see Did you see who had the nerve to get in John Bylan's face? Tristan and, Thompson. Come on, man. Really? That dude? Him. Oh, you think it's not because he, now you doing you doing what you supposed to been doing for years. Now you finally doing it. You get you got the nerve to get into the coach's face. What? You, you, if I was John Baldwin, you know what I would have told Tristan Thompson? Take your ass to the gym and get on the free throw line. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get up out my face. You, you realize after he did that, he sat him down. Like, oh, for real? Yeah, but, go, but LeBron, go sit down. But LeBron, Wait, so he sat him saying. down. Yes, he sat hey, him down. Good, exactly. That's what he's supposed the, to the do. The rest of the, he sat him down. Like, okay, well, you, you, you go, go on, the on the bench and you, you, don't, you, you, don't come you back. clapping from now on. That's what you're doing. That's you what you're supposed to do. Kev, you want to know what type of impact LeBron had on Cleveland? This, this is a series of questions. 
Was there really much a difference of uh, feeling as when we won a championship to when they announced that LeBron was coming back to Cleveland? No. Was that not the same feeling? Not at all. Because you knew it was coming. You was like, oh, snap. LeBron coming back. It's all now. I, re- I was sitting in my living room, Kev, when, they, when I, I heard the report. I ran downstairs and opened my front door, and I was ju- I said it to the whole world. He, he coming, coming back. back. He coming <laughs> back. That's I was it. I was at work. I was at the yeah, call we center. was at work. Yeah, Maybe I was at work at in the in the call center, and the whole place was like, man, yeah, it was crazy <laughs> because that's the LeBron because we sucked for four years while he was in Miami. Yeah, and we suck again. And we suck I again. am. I am. I can't even watch the Cavs and neither, enjoy it. Yeah. I thought this was going to be an enjoying. See, this isn't even, this is nothing joyful about it. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hey. watch this anymore. I don't want to see this. So yes, you know why I still hate on LeBron because he left me. me That's too, why. Phil. That's exactly Phil, why. I'm, I'm with you. I'm Phil. going to admit it. I'm, Phil, going to be I'm with you 100. percent I'm with you 100 percent, bro. Because you left me. I hope Kawhi <laughs> rips your heart out and tosses it on the floor at your feet and kicks it out. You know why? Because you did that to me again. I wish you, you 100%, left me Phil. again. I wish you 100%, Phil. You told me you wasn't going to leave, LeBron. You said, it. you said you ain't had the energy to go nowhere again, and this man. Is what I, and this is what I said last week, too. A professional athlete should never, ever, 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 Commit to a city, verbally. Yeah, he, he messed up. You should on that never one. commit to a city verbally. Why? Because things change, situations change, people change. He left us again, Reg. I, I'm, I'm with but, you, but but he but what was? Again. I know, I know, because I know where you get ready to go. Because in your head, because in my head, I understand it because. You know, this is how I was when he went to Miami. I was like, this team is garbage. Why would he want to carry this team? And I literally sat there and watched a man. I have never, as much as I love Michael Jordan and as much as I respect Michael Jordan, I have never, ever, ever seen one man carry a team to the NBA championship. That man literally, Reg, you remember how terrible that team was. We couldn't even hit an open jump shot. When LeBron would kick it out yeah. to these open players, hold, hold up, they would break it up, though, open, bro. wide open jump shots. You talking shots. about 2007? No, the last no the la- the last year he was here when we when we barely beat Boston when we swept Atlanta we got you know we got cocky. I'm sorry when we who did we beat the first round? Who did Indiana. We, beat? we barely Indiana. beat Indiana. We swept the Hawks. We got cocky again. And then we forgot how bad this team was until he got to Boston. And he literally had to carry us over the hump. That man was so tired, he could not even celebrate after we won the Eastern Conference. You remember that? He was on the wall. Phil, hold on. And one day he was so tired, he just knew what he was about to get. In. <laughs> He was on he knew, the wall. He knew what was waiting I don't for him. You know why I don't want to hear that? Because this man came out and literally did MJ reincarnate. This man dropped fifty he something did. points on the Golden State he Warriors, did. and what happened? But but, but Phil, no, hold on. ain't no buts. I'm what not taking. Happened, Reg? I'm not taking Reg, nothing away from that run from LeBron Reg, James. But don't say you ain't no, ever seen no, one man carry no. somebody Let to the me, finals. A- ask me again. What happened, Reg? Reg, what happened? That man. Okay, then. The rest of the team screwed it up. No, for not the rest of the team. That man. No, it was another man. George, if George Hill makes them free he throws. Free throw, hell, they put that man in that If George bit. Hill knows how to make free oh, throws, about Earl? Yeah, we Earl. ain't in that situation. <laughs> I call him that man. <laughs> Where are you getting ready to go? You getting ready to go to Philadelphia? Yeah, I obviously did the same exact thing LeBron I, did. I will take the Kimbe Matumbo, Aaron McKee, come, come Eric on, Snow. Phil. I will take those Phil. over. Phil. They, I mean, Rez, they wasn't even hitting open jumpers, Yes, but man. the Kim May Matumbo can't score. He was, he was Eric Snow couldn't the score. Year, George was, Lynch couldn't score. Aaron McKee was cool, man. Stop it. <laughs> no. Stop it. Uh, hold on, I, I forget the rest of the squad. I don't remember the rest of the squad. No. no and true. he won game one against Shaq and Kobe. LeBron almost had it. LeBron almost. LeBron. Who? Who? The Golden State Warriors <laughs> in their prime: Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, LeBron, 
literally almost beat them single handedly by himself. I've never seen. So yes, Kev, I'm hurt. I'm upset. I, I, it's been two years. I'm sick of it. I am too. I'm tired of it already. I'm, I, I, hey man, I got three. I got two. How many more years we got? Three or two? LeBron, come on. The good old Please. days saying so far Please. away, don't it? The good old days saying so far away, don't it? Man, I keep looking at 2016. I was like, dang, that was that was three years ago. What is that? <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back to that uh, right now. Joining us on the phone line, she is a power forward for the Illyria Catholic Panthers. Her name is Allie Winnen, and she joins us right now on the show. Allie, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Oh, we're doing fine. Thanks for taking time out of your night. We really appreciate it. Of course, of course. Happy to be on. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's get right into it. Now, you guys finished 22-5 uh, and five last season. You were undefeated in your conference. What is the key, in, in your opinion, to maintaining that success this year? Um, I mean, I think that our key this year to – be as successful as we were last year and even be more successful is we have to have a good balance um, with everything we do. I mean, we can't come out and have one bad game. We have to come out and be ready to play every single game. I mean, um, every game we have a target on our back. I mean, we're some teams Super Bowl, so I know that um, we just have to be consistent with everything we do. So I think that's the key to be as successful as we were. Now, how do you uh, you embrace – uh, that that role that you have as as one of the leaders on that team, how, how important is that to you, and and how do you uh, how do you embrace that? Um, definitely getting my team involved with everything that we do, and um, I really try to make my team better people um, on the court and off the court, um, pushing them to be their best selves every single day, and coming into practice with a positive attitude. I mean, every basketball season's long and it's draining, and I know. Uh, sometimes we come into practice and it's hard and uh, my coaches get on us all the time but just having that positive attitude and being that influence to some girls like to say like hey like we're fine we can do this um, and having experience really does help um, everybody on my team. Allie Winnen from the Illyria Catholic Panthers joins us. Allie uh, can you talk about the mentality that you have to possess to be able to to, to kind of do the dirty work uh, in the paint yet still be effective uh, and, and and I guess for lack of a better term dominate down there? Um, I, I mean, definitely um, I'm getting used to getting beat up. So, I mean, <laughs> I've learned to I've learned to um, play my role and um, just to play like I know how to play. And I'm definitely really strong and I get and my strength helps me inside. So just like beating people around and um, I'm, I mean, I take I try to take every point per, that's scored on me personal. And I think defense is something that I take pride in. Um, not even scoring, just defensively, I take everything personal. So I think that that's what makes me um, a successful player. So uh, now, are are there advantages to to playing with your twin sister, and how do you guys motivate each other to get better? Um, wait, can you repeat that? Yeah, are there advantages of playing to playing with your sister, and how do you guys motivate each other to get better? Um, <laughs> we definitely have a lot of advantages. I mean, me and my sister read each other very well. I mean, we've been playing basketball since together since what fifth grade. So, um, it's, and it's always a support system. Even when we're not playing, um, we, we tell each other what we do good, what we do bad. I mean, in practice, we push each other because we have, we play against each other every single day. And, um, I think that helps us a lot and we're going to college together. It's a blessing in itself. And I think that just having that support system and your best friend by your side, um, it really does help to make us better. Now you guys are, are, are twins and there's, I believe there's another set of twins on your, on your team as well. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we do have uh, another pair of twins, Kaylee and Stephanie. Now, that does, now there are there, are there any advantages to that? I mean, do you guys, I don't know. I mean, you, I know you said you guys are close, but are there any other advantages of playing with your twin sister? Like, does that does that not really factor in on the court for you guys at all? Um, yeah, it does. I mean, um, just being able to read we read each other really well on the court. And I think that the other two twins on our team do too. I mean, we know um, our moves, what we're gonna do. So, um, I think that does help too. Now, how how do you uh, balance being excellent on the court with also being excellent in the classroom? Um, you just got to find your balance. You got to find what works for you. Um, studying wise, I think that um, I've really made an effort to 
just find time for basketball and school and um, just trying to be the best you can be in the classroom is what really helps you. I mean, college is not all basketball and it's not all sports. It's also academics. And I know that a lot of people go to college to, I want to play basketball. I want to do this, but getting your grades and a degree is what you need for your future. So I just, I put that in front of my mind and um, I put schoolwork before anything. And my team does too. I think our cumulative GPA is like a 3.8, 3.9. So um, we all, we all really work hard in the classroom. Now you and your sister have both committed to Saginaw Valley state. What was it about Saginaw Valley state that made you decide that that was the right place for you guys. and, And that's where you wanted to call home as far as when you're, when you're in college. So, um, yeah, when I got the call from Coach Pruitt, the head coach, that she took the head job at Saginaw Valley, which she was actually at a school that I was looking at prior to that, and she um, talked to me and my sister, and they have an, they need they need size and they need post. Okay. So I think that she really went after us. And when I took a tour, I met the girls, I met the team, um, I saw the campus, and um, it's a beautiful place, and I really love the atmosphere. And the coach has a winning mentality, and she's going to push me to be the best player me and my sister can be. And I think that getting the opportunity to play together was really the winning factor too. So yeah, I found we found the college we really like and enjoy. So a- as of right now, then, and, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong. So the the plan is for you guys to basically be inserted right away. There's no talk of registering or anything like that. Yes. Um, Yes, they definitely have a need for post. So me and my sister knew that that was one of the factors that we wanted to come in and make an impact right from our freshman year. And I think our coach expects that out of us too. So, yeah. Now, are, can, can you speak on some of the other schools that you talked to that you had conversations with before you decided to go to Saginaw Valley State? Um, yes, I talked to a couple uh, D2s locally um, and a couple, a few D1s, but – Honestly, the D2s that were looking at me and my sister together were right. only Saginaw State. So I really wasn't – and there was a couple schools in Florida and Georgia down south, warmer, um, that wanted me and my sister together. But we didn't really feel like going that far, Okay. honestly. And um, Michigan is a great place to be, and we really like the area. So um, I think that that was our best fit. And um, I, we did have a couple opportunities to go look at some other schools, but we ju- we took our first visit and we knew right away, like, that's where we wanted to go. So I didn't feel like I had to look anywhere else. All right. Now, I- I'm going to ask you uh, this question because it's kind of like tradition on this show, uh, because one of our, 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 our members here is, a, is an alum of the school. Have you, did you have any contact at all with Bowling Green? Me, um, a little, <laughs> a little bit. Um, I know the uh, <laughs> the head coach's husband. Um, he's a coach at PW. Okay. Um, Baldwin Wallace. So yes, I do know. Um, I do know her. I do know the head coach. I talked to them a little bit, but um, yeah, I, did, I didn't. Yeah, but I I like Bowling Green. It's a good school, but mm-hmm. I do know the coaches there and stuff. But they were not inter- they were not interested in you and your sister together, correct? Am I understanding you correctly? No, there? no, they no, they were not. For um, a lot of schools, thought that me and my sister pl- kind of played the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that they took that into consideration, and maybe I'm not. I mean, I definitely think I have the size. Maybe I'm not like agile enough. Like you know, I, a lot of people say I don't have a basketball body, especially like my freshman, sophomore year, they're like, she's a lot bigger for a post, but I think I'm very fast in my feet and my mm-hmm. strength is one, strength is one of my biggest um, assets to my game. So I think that I've proved a lot of people wrong and me and my sister can play together. And we've been playing together since freshman year. Right. And it's obviously turned into success at Elyria Catholic. So. Wow. You know, I get your people, man. I gotta talk to some. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta talk people, to the scouting yeah. department in Bowling Green. Oh my god! You can tell him I said hi, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey man, listen, their 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 loss and all the other schools' losses, Saginaw Valley State's gain is way uh, is the way I look at it. So, um, listen, Allie, thank you so much for coming on tonight. We really uh, appreciate it, and uh, we're we're looking forward to seeing what you and your sister are going to do for the rest of the way for Elyria Catholic and for Saginaw Valley State. And uh, we hope to get out there and cover one of you guys' game very soon. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. Happy to be on. No problem. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Allie Winnin from the Elyria Catholic Panthers, another member of our Top 25. So she's got a twin sister 
that also plays for Ilya Catholic. And then there's another set of twins that plays for Ilya Catholic. Come on, E. They don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to be good enough. No, 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 no. I gotta find those twins and try to convince them to come Bowling Green. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's up to Bowling Green. Bowling Green didn't want to see, and I get it. Bowling Green didn't want to take her and her, and a lot of those schools didn't want to take. Her. You all right over there, bro? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. A lot of those schools didn't want to take her and her sister together. Um, and so they wanted to go somewhere and play somewhere together. Second Valley State said, "Yeah, come on." They didn't want to go to Georgia, or Florida. That's kind of surprising to me. They didn't want to go that far away. They want. They like Michigan. They want to be here when it's twenty degrees outside. Oh, okay. Hey, the difference about basketball and football, you play indoors. Play indoors. <laughs> yeah, play indoors. I ain't got to worry about that. That's, that's why I'm looking forward to covering some games. Is you know, I ain't got to put on four layers yeah, to go out there. Because when I listen, listen. When I went out to that Division Five championship with Kirtland and Ironton, bruh. Well, well, me and E was out there uh, with that uh, against that mentor in that same day. My feet were so Wee. cold, man. We laughed. He had, he had to go to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom. Like, like I had to go to the bathroom. Times, times, man. <laughs> yeah. We laughed at y'all because yeah, our game <laughs> complete in regulation. We saw y'all was going to overtime. Man. We was in the car by that time getting warm on our way to go man. get some food. Listen. So, yeah. But we were, for a minute, though, it looked like it might. We were like, please. I can't even lie. Me and it feel like, please, no overtime. No overtime. That, we can't man. get out of here. Me and Rich was playing, praying for a running clock. Yeah, we were. <laughs> that, that fourth down, I was like, come on, please, yeah. please, Master, just stop them. I'm not trying to go to overtime. Man, I'm not trying listen. to stand out here. So, yeah, no, but, but, I mean, listen, but it, it's cool. You know, and, and I, did, I didn't want to, you know, get all corny. Like, oh, do you and your sister ever substitute each other? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, no, no. But I mean, listen, man. If you want to play with your with your sister, and and I'm sure they've been playing together since she's what you say fifth grade. Yeah, so, fifth grade. yeah. If you can keep playing with your sister and do it in college, I I, I love to be a city in and the one on one and one of the one on one games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they probably go at it. Right. They probably go at it. All right, man. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll come back. Last segment of the show. You know how we do the freestyle a little bit. So we'll come back and uh, we'll go ahead and and uh, do the last segment and then and to thank you again to. Ali Winnin, and thank you also to Michaela Elmore for coming on uh, the show. We're going to be reaching out to some ADs uh, to try to get to some games, uh, hopefully this week. And uh, Eli, uh, take us out. The name of the song. The name of the song is called Diamonds by William Beats. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad? Yeah.
Boy, your murder ain't a beat. All right, welcome back to the show. Last segment, freestyling. You know how we do on the show, man. Last segment of the show, we just freestyling, man. We talk about whatever. So Eli asked during the break uh-huh. if we uh, all got our Christmas shopping done. I have not finished yet because I'm live on my Facebook f- uh, feed. I will not reveal what I got, but I got some things. Um, Eli. Yes, sir. What, what, what's happening with the ring, bro? You're I'm on my live Facebook feed, so I can't say oh, okay. the same thing right now. Okay, okay. So that's that's the route you're taking, huh? You, you that's that's how you going you're out. You're out okay. now, okay. huh? Right, cool. Nobody parking right, cool. out. Ooh. Cool. cool. All right. So Stop. Reg, Reg, he got another round. Stop being such a tourist, man. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Slow moving, <laughs> so slow. Got to put mean? one foot forward. I don't know if I like how this feels. Let me take it back one time. Oh, real quick, hey man, shout out to my man, my man Joe Harkless, man on my live. Hey Joe, I might be hitting you up for one of them, uh, for one of them braces, man. Go, 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 cut. Hey man, go, go check out, man. Sons of SP Phillips, man. That's that's my man, starting his own brand. You know what I mean? He, he got the got the gig. Gonna get you right with your clothes. Got the accessories, got the gear, man. Sons of SP Phillips, man. Look for them on Facebook. Check them out. I think they're on Instagram, too. Let me know if I'm wrong on that, Joe, but I think they're on Instagram, too, man. So, Sons of SP Phillips, man. Go check them out. You want to get right with your gear. You need fashion advice, how to get yourself looking right, man, when you're going out in public and all that kind of stuff, man. Go check my man out. He's doing some big things, man. Positive black movement down there. So, go check him out, man. Sons of SP Phillips. My man, Joe Harkins, man. Shout out, Joe. So, um, 3824, eh? Uh, you know, see, this is what I'm. This is what I told people. This is what I told people. I told them to slow down. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm really not trying to glow. Yeah, yeah you're kicking us while we down. Mm, but maybe right I'm going a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Although, listen, the Eagles are seven and seven. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't talk too much. Didn't y'all win the Super Bowl a couple of years ago? Yeah, we did win the Super okay, Bowl. Okay, yeah, be all right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I, and you know, I'm. I'm still lightweight celebrating that Super Bowl, too. <laughs> I ain't going to front. I'm still lightweight celebrating it. What up, cuz? My cousin, what up, cuz? Um, yeah, I'm still lightweight celebrating it. Let me do this. Let me just switch the gears totally, because like I said, this is the last segment of the show. You know how we do. Let me just ask a question right now. Why is everybody coming after Eminem? What, what, why is everybody Thank coming you. after Eminem? Here why we go. Why are we going after Eminem? Here we go. Everybody, get your cameras ready. Why? You ready for this? You ready for this? Because Eminem is trash. trash. Why? Nah. nah. Trash. Nope. So you saying Nick Cannon is trash. better? Trash. Than- no, ain't nobody. Ain't nobody saying, saying all that. All that. <laughs> what, what What I'm saying is Eminem pick and chooses who he beef with. That's what I'm saying. And they're all pop stars. Trash. I, you know, here's here's what I say about Eminem. Number one, I'll say this about Eminem. Eminem, when Eminem first came into the game, my thought was, excuse me, my thought was, okay, another white rapper. That was my first thought. But then, not long after, t- Eminem, let's not be clear, let's be clear here. Eminem has earned his stripes in hip hop. Eminem has earned every single stripe that he's got in hip hop. Every single stripe, every single accolade, Eminem has earned those. Eminem there, is not a top five rapper. There is Sorry. Not, there is not an MC. Come on, stop it. Sorry. I, no, no, no. I, I don't, and I don't know Sorry. if he's top five. There is not an MC that, that is going to, when you talk about an MC killing another MC lyrically, mm. there is no MC in the game that's going to kill Machine him. Machine Gun Kelly did it to no, him he already. Didn't. No, he didn't. Yes, he no, did. He didn't. That was, no, he didn't. Machine Gun Kelly did it to him already. Machine Gun Kelly did not kill Man, he him won that him. battle Stop hands down. It. He won that battle Stop hands it. down. Oh, Stop God. it. No, Hands he down, he won that battle. No, Nobody he wants to admit MGK, that. Eminem biggest, Eminem biggest con- contribution to hip-hop is 
putting the Fifty Cent on. Eminem, Eminem did the same. And MGK did that's the his same, biggest contribution MGK to hip hop. MGK did the same thing everybody else do. Talk about Eminem with the with the pills and go after Haley. The MGK didn't do he, nothing different. Than he that. put some bars together on Eminem head. I ain't saying he, he had bar, but to say there is no MC out there that's gonna kill Eminem lyrically. I'm sorry, that's not happening. No MC is going to kill Eminem lyrically. That's not happening. MGK did the Trash. same thing that everybody else did. He talk about the pills and talk about Haley. Congratulations. Trash. He he didn't do anything that didn't that no one else that has talked about that Eminem has done. Eminem ain't got it, man. Okay, all right. It's been quite a while since he had it. I, he never had it. To I, don't, me. I don't see. I don't see too many MCs going after Eminem. No, he, he, he never had it. Since, to we, me. since we don't talk about who got what, I don't see too many MCs he, going after Eminem. Because Eminem not relevant. He's not nobody to okay. go after. Okay. He not relevant. Okay. Nick tried it. Who was Nick? Who was Nick? That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. yeah. He, there's nobody. Here's 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 two two rules, Nick Nick Cannon. Let me let me help you out here. <laughs> two rules. First, if you're going to write a diss record, you should probably rap on the diss record that you're writing. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> I didn't even listen to it. So I I didn't even. The, the first one he didn't even, he wrote two. The first one he didn't even rap on it. He had Charlie Clips and a couple other dudes. Number two, if you're going to write a diss record and you're going to make it a posse cut, you should not get outshined by the dudes you recruit to be on the record. You should be better than them. Okay. Well, well, sir, Nick Cannon can't rap in the I'm, first I'm place. I'm saying, I know. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> Shout out to Nick Cannon for staying true to the culture, staying true to hip hop, and saying, you know what? I know it's Eminem, but Eminem came at me. I'm going to go at Eminem. So I'm going to give Nick Cannon props for that at and, least. And that's why I'm, I'm discredited Eminem. Why would you even make a diss record? For, well, no, well, he, Nick, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't make a diss record. Why would you mention person? him? In, like, why would you even mention Nick Young nah, in your flow, though? Because that, and that, that's, that, here's, here's why, I did, and this is why I would not discredit Eminem, but this is one thing I say about Eminem. Eminem, more often than not, even though he's lyrical, mm-hmm. he says things for shock value, right? Like, but, because you're right. Like, for what reason, you know, why, why, why you are you going to the cannon? What did he say? But he said something, something, something about Mariah. He said something about Mariah, how he no. dated Mariah first and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, go back to one of the other lines, you know, that whole when that girl Shandra Levy got killed, you know, and it was big all on news, and he had to line the song, Why, how could one Shandra be so Levy and all that. You know what I mean? Like, so he'll say stuff for shock value. Yeah. But, but you, when we talk about other rappers, 50 the same way. 50, uh, to me, 50 Cent is only relevant if he beefing with somebody. But 50 Cent got more hit records than Eminem. No, he don't. Yes, he do. 50 Cent dropped a classic album. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, get, 50, rich or, get rich or die trying. Every, 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 every track on Get Rich or Die Trying. Stop it. When, you can, you can go on, through man. Get Rich or Die come Trying on, without man. hitting without that fast a, forward button, all. man. You, get Rich or Die Trying. Him got a, some dope records, too, now. Him got some dope yeah, records, he got too. Yeah, he got some nice hits. But I'll say this. He got some nice hits. I will say this. And and this is what I will agree with. Yeah, come on now. He's got some. He's got. He's got platinum records. Eminem's got platinum that, records. That many one. Platinum that records. that one verse on "Forgot About Dre." <laughs> Renegade. Yeah. His verse on "Renegade" when he outshined Jay Z. We, we talking about verses. We said songs. Look, that's what I said. I he said don't he don't have got some songs. Verses. Yes, he, he, got got he got verses. He got songs. He got verses. He got lose yourself. What was the one? Um, I'm no the real idea. shady. Yes, I'm the real shady. That, that, that garbage. Was shady. Garbage. It was hot. It was popular. It, it was popping back then. Garbage. Look, look. I mean, the way I am. Will, will you play that right now? <laughs> Rick, this, is what I tell, this is what I tell people all the time. I tell people, look, I base, you know, my, my legend status of people who I still listen to. Any legend you name, I still listen to. Exactly. I have not listened to Eminem since I was in middle that school. That doesn't mean exactly. Eric, that doesn't mean Eminem's not lyrical. That doesn't mean Eminem can't hang. Eminem, now, say what you want about popular Eminem lyrically can go toe to toe with any MC uh, in the game. Yes, he can. But, but yes, it, he can. It, it, I have to see. Is his music? Is his music classic? Do it translate from generation to generation? You can go put in Illmatic right now, and that's from what oh, yeah, 10, absolutely. 15 years yeah, ago. Absolutely. Like this is dope right Probably now. Not. And, and this here's a, dope right now. Here's another point about Eminem <laughs> that I'll say, and and I agree with Lord Jamar on that. Shout out Lord Jamar. When Lord Jamar said the hood don't listen to Eminem, and I agree, I, I cannot. There is never. Excuse me, there has never been a time. There's never been a time when a brother came up to me and said, Yo, Kev, you got to go check out the new Eminem joint. Never. That has never happened to me. At all. It's nothing I can never, relate that Eminem and, and, talking and, and, about. And I don't just, pop pills. 
I don't. <laughs> I don't hate my girlfriend. I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate my mama. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Come on, man. You exactly. got something else for me. Exactly. That's what I will agree with about Eminem. Now, but but again, I'm just talking about strictly lyrics. To say Eminem is not lyrical. I'm not saying he's not lyrical. I'm just saying he's trash. But it now, don't I, mean that don't mean I nothing. Pit, yeah, lyrics mean a lot. Jada but, Kiss is lyrical, but can he put a hit record together? But no. But kind nah, of. Stop. See, but Sometimes. then and there's where we did because to me hit, a hit record don't mean nothing. Vanilla Ice had a hit record. It's for me. It's it's who puts out the classics. It got to be who the you gonna remember. Man. And I just, I yeah. Eminem's not. He just Eminem's don't gonna, stick he, to he me like that. He does have some songs that you will remember. Now stop it. You're not gonna remember Stan. You're not gonna remember Lose Yourself. I like. Once. I won't remember Lose Yourself, and that's only because of the movie. Stan was deep. Stan was. Deep. I, like, I didn't care listen, nothing about really? Stan. No, I, I like I, only one song that I could pop in Eminem that I will still listen to right now. And that's Superman. Superman. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That, all the rest of that is garbage, man. I'll it. say this: I, I haven't, I haven't bought an Eminem album since the Eminem show. That was the last Eminem Bob album that I bought. That was the last one I listened to. I that know. Probably I, really? 2000, yes. 2001. That was it. Phil. Pocket Biggie died in 90, 96 and 97, mm-hmm. and I will still listen to Tupac and Biggie to this all day. day, every day. Oh, yeah, of course. But you throw some Eminem <laughs> on, I'm going to look at you like, what is you doing? <laughs> Take this garbage out. Give me the off score. Give me, me the core. It would depend on the song for me, because Eminem, I do like some Eminem songs. It would depend on nah. the song for me. I don't, I don't understand the, the hype about... Bruh, I would rather listen to Drake than li- the hood no, listen to Drake. Yes. Bruh, oh, what? the hood listens to Drake I, I'm with before Drake. they listen to Eminem. I'm, I'm rocking with Drake. What does that say? That's the hood. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That's the hood's fault. It, Drake, they listen to Drake. Mainstream the and hood, hood people listen to Drake before they listen to Eminem. That's what does that tell you? And, and I, then, I blame the hood for that. And then... I don't have to just go to legends and old school rappers that I think that's ahead of Eminem. J. Cole is better than Eminem. Kendrick Lamar is better than Eminem. I got to agree with that. <laughs> I'll take, free, I, I, I'll take he, free bands over Eminem. Future is better than Eminem. I'll take free bands <laughs> over Eminem, bro. Yes. What you talking about? Yes. I'll take if, free If there's one person I got to go sign and say, man, make me a hit record, man. I need to I need to move some units. I'm picking Future over but, Eminem, but, man. See, but see, and I Flat did, out. And again, I guess this is where I'm thinking is because to me, a hit record don't mean you a dope MC because you got a hit record. That don't mean you a dope Future MC. a legend, man. Future is not a legend. Future a legend, it, man. Bro. Boy, you, in, you asking the wrong generation. You asking nah. the wrong generation. Okay, Future a legend, but man. But here's the thing, though. You say you can't relate to Eminem because with the, the popping pill, but you can relate to Future with the, the syrup and, and all the drug sauce he be you talking know, about? He, I mean, he you know talking why? about uh, he got other content in you know his music why? that I, okay. he you know talks why? about the no, struggle. No, I'm getting ready to tell you why. I'm right. getting ready to tell you why. And there's a lot of the, a lot of reasons why. Future is straight. Have you? If you would listen to Future, Future is turn up music. Yes. Future is when nothing you want to feel but good. When you want to feel good. <laughs> when you when you going. And it's a lot. It, the crazy mm-hmm. thing is, it's a lot of brothers that had had a lot of pain that's been hurt by some females out there that follow this man yeah. religiously because he puts that in his music. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like he. I don't want to go home thinking about beating my wife or popping a pee. That's I, all I get from Eminem, man. I, swear, I promise I, I, you. I'm that's, depressed, that's man. That's the only thing I ever got from Eminem was depression. And I'm, I'm just the, like, uh, I guess it just, it just, I guess it uh, just depends on, you know, on, on your, your taste. Me, I, and again, I'm, I'm strictly looking at it on a hip-hop level. As an MC and a lyricist, there is no one out there. Future, J. Cole, Kendrick, Donor Lucas, Lupe. I don't care who. There uh, is no one out there that will kill Eminem lyrically as a lyricist. Uh, Nas will. Now, Nas no, will. No, no, not even Nas. Uh, there is no will. one. Nas, Nas will. KRS. Hey. Nas no will. Nobody. Hey, he, he just no. named some names and everything. Quiet is kept. I think K. Dot to give it to Eminem. I, don't, I, don't I really so. do. I really, in my pick, head, in my head, I think Kendrick would now, destroy Eminem. Now, it, 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 when Eminem's pen game is on, I mean, on, vintage Eminem pen game, ain't nobody killing Eminem. Sorry. He, he, he washed. He been he, washed. He, he washed. For a long time. <laughs> we're, we're, maybe, <laughs> the, thing, the thing about it is this. Is there somebody worth it that's going to come at Eminem? That's the thing. But he loses credibility because you throwing shots at Nick Cannon. Throw, some, throw a shot at somebody that's got some clout in the game, man. But, Who but is you, Nick Cannon? Why but, would you even go at but, him? But you see but you see that he's got 
Eminem has real MCs and real lyricists riding for him. Okay. Eminem has 50 Cent riding for this, him. Jordan Lucas riding for him. Worst of Five Nine riding look, look, for him. Look, look, at, look at the people he beef with that, that he I has. get it. I know. I get it. I get <laughs> it, Nick Reg. Cannon. Uh, Gaga. What's her? Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. But that's right, who are the Gary. people you dissing, <laughs> but man? But here's the thing, though. Is, it, is, he, is he dissing them? <laughs> Is he again though? Is he dissing him because Riot he doesn't Carey. like him? Is he dissing him because he's going for that shot? That, and again, that's he know not to go at nobody factor. legit. That's what I All think right. it is. I don't think even I would love anybody. to see that. I would. Li- go at somebody I would legit, li- man. I would literally love to see that. But I here's really the thing: would. these other MCs know that if you go, if you go at Eminem, it's going to boost your career. It's going to boost your visibility. And that's exactly because why they did it. Jadakiss said. For five to seven hundred thousand, I'll kill him. And then for five to seven hundred thousand, he did say that. He right. said that. I saw and, that, and I but, believe it. But but he said, but 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 he but you see, he put a price on it. And I it, believe it. because he know Nas if, will do it for free. Eminem because he Nas know do it for free. He know Eminem is capable of killing me. So if I'm gonna get killed, I better get five to seven hundred thousand. Nas will do it for free. He did it to the whole Rockefeller. You know, you know why Eminem kills everybody? Because Eminem has fans. That's why. It, it, feel, yeah. it, feel, it feels like he got you know the what pop, it feels like. He got the you know pop what it feels culture. Like? It feels like when uh when it was uh oh my god, what's the boy name from from clips? Oh my oh, god, Pusha T. Yeah, yeah. Pusha it feels like Pusha T versus Drake. Anytime that it's Eminem versus anybody, it always feels yeah. like it's like yeah. whoever drops something, it'd be cool. But it's like they yeah. fans are like, nah. You remember how Drake fans quietly, yeah, Drake won. How did no, he, he win? No, he that's didn't. Same, that's same, oh, that same way as people saying that Nelly won that battle with KRS way back in the day. Nelly got crushed by KRS, but I, Nelly I, got more fans wait, than KRS. Wait, Who? I don't remember that. Yeah, Nelly and KRS would be. I don't care how much I like a person or how much I, I, I got to be honest in the situation. At the time, Jay-Z was the hottest dude in the game. I love Jay-Z. When Nas came in there and did what he did, yeah. to oh, Nas, Ether? Yeah, that's he what him. made me say he Nas is the yeah. undisputed champ in this game. Flat it was out. A rap. Not only did he he uh, he had Jay Z at him, Jay Z had Cameron, all the dip, all of them was coming at Nas, and Nas didn't feature nobody on none of his stuff. But he, there, but he he did against it's Rockefeller. just my opinion that nobody is going to lyrically kill. I gotta go back Eminem. and look at that. Like, no one's no that, one's doing that. Check it out. Yeah. Now, pull now, ether up. Am I saying? Am I saying that? Oh yeah, you never heard ether. Oh, bro. Oh, no, you never wait. heard ether. Time out. Stop the show. Hold on. Stop the show. Hold on. Goodbye. In the in the camp. In the, this is big <laughs> Philip Ruff, for Philip Rucker for my man Kevin he Hanley, never who can't ether, speak man. right now. Wow, you ain't I never might, heard. I might have heard it. Uh, you never heard, have you heard no Vaseline? Yes. You never heard you it. Never you never heard ether, ether? You gotta check ether out. That's man. one of the greatest diss tracks ever, man. Oh my, God. my father was a pastor, man. You and never he heard never heard I listened to either? NWA back in the day. Well, you was <laughs> on there. Anyway, but what I what I'm saying though is to, just to me, lyric and I'm I'm only speaking as a lyricist. There's nobody that's killing it. Now, am I saying that Eminem can't be beaten? Absolutely not, because there are plenty of MCs that can beat Eminem. But when you talk about like you kill an MC where there's no there's uh, there's no coming back from this ever. That's never going to happen to Eminem. People said MGK killed Eminem and his career is over. How is MGK killing Eminem's career? How? It ain't happening. It, yep. was, it was his. He now, won a diss track. Now, his, okay, it's so fine. That's cool. Eminem is killing his own career. Well, exactly. That, Terrible maybe, albums. He but nobody, if anybody's gonna do it, it's gonna be it's gonna be self inflicted. It won't be another MC. MGK might have won the battle, but that's okay. That's part of battling. You get you battle, you and, lose. And Manum don't want no smoke with Prime Time and uh, Lil Wayne, Lil Weezy. He don't want no smoke with Prime Time, Lil Weezy. Yeah. For real, I I just personally you talking I about can't, s- talking about Gilly the Kid, Weezy. Prime Time, that's what you're talking Weezy. About. I can't see Eminem ever ever saying. I don't want to rap against that dude. I, I can't ever see Eminem came up battling. That's how he got discovered as a battle rapper. He came up battling. Eminem been in them. Eight, you, eight Mile was based on his life. He came up battling. He, he don't got no good names on his resume, though. Mm. He don't got nothing on his resume, man. No, maybe not. He don't got nothing on his maybe resume. Not. I'm just, I'm just saying that there's not a, there's not an MC that Eminem that I believe it, Eminem is afraid is of. He, is he lyrically talented? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's no. Can he put that. words together? Absolutely. But his, his, his. his for everybody to act like that, this man is is like the top goat five. I wouldn't put him. What have he done? The goat, the goat of all time. What has like, he done? I man? wouldn't put him in, in my top five. I wouldn't put him in. Them. He might not even be in my top ten. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like Eminem. Number one, ain't a lyricist. Number one, ain't an MC. Number two, ain't an MC. Number three, hasn't earned his spot in the culture because he has. And number four, can be killed by any MC. Eminem cannot be killed. I don't, th- I don't think Eminem would be Ice Cube in the rap battle. Oh come on. <laughs> That's the honest truth. We'll have to see. 
we'll have to see. But I, I just, I just, I, I wonder why why people were coming. At, but Eminem again, he does it for shock factor. He does it for shock factor. No, he's gonna, I'm, I'm looking at something. He's gonna, lyrics. he's gonna. Eminem? No, oh, Ether? Uh, Ether. You just gotta listen to the song, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta read, pull the song read, up. Reading the lyrics is not gonna do it justice. You gotta listen to the song. You gotta listen to the song. Some of the, the, the to me, like you talking about disc albums. There's Ether, and I'm not really doing them in order. There's No Vaseline. Uh-huh. Second round knockout by Cannabis again and LL Cool J. Ooh, Second ooh, round me. knockout is a dope. And, and Pac this record to Biggie. Yeah, you gotta hit him put up. that in there. Hit him up. But we talk about a legend being. Lyrically killed by another MC. cannabis on that second round knockout. Cannabis he killed LL Cool J. LL. He murdered LL. Did he kill his career? No, no, but in that particular battle, cannabis killed LL on that. Cannabis went in on LL on that, and that was all due to M- LL overreacting from that one cannabis line on that four three two one song. LL way he overreacted that whole line. That's still my favorite disc record yeah. to this day. I yeah. love that disc record. was in the prime of his career, you know. Hey, you ain't about hey. to do that to me. Hey, but look. <laughs> say, you, ain't, you don't want to borrow that. You want to idolize. You want to socialize, something like that. But no, but so those, to me, yeah, no Vaseline, Ether, second round knockout, hit him up. No Vaseline. I, th- I, I think you want him to know my honest opinion. It didn't, it didn't like literally, but I think, I think no Vaseline killed Easy e man. Like, that killed his spirit, man. Like, it was over with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easy, <laughs> easy and Jerry. He never, he never got back right after that, man. Easy and Jerry Heller was on that, that yeah. shady stuff, yeah. man. Ice Cube was like, I'm not having it. No, I, I, Cube wasn't having it, man. You Cube know what wasn't I mean? having it. Why all the good groups got to break up, man? NWA all broke up. Group. All the good groups break they up. They only man. had one album together. Just imagine they had two or three albums yep. that they, uh, yep. material they put out. But that's, that's the whole thing with, with hip hop and with battling, man. You can go back and, and honestly, you don't really even have to be provoked to come at somebody. So Eminem going to Nick Cannon, you know, Nick doesn't ne- necessarily have to do something that, they, you know, you can go all, I can go, I'm going to date myself, but you can go all the way back to 1980 with, you know, Kumo D was, there was a dude named Busy B. Busy B was, was, was dope on the scene. Busy B was like, he was like a legend at that time. It was like, it was, Busy B was like the man, like nobody was messing with Busy B. Who? And I, I told you it's 1980. I know you're not going to know who it is. I'm I'm just saying, Busy B was like a legend, and he still is. He's he's one he's one of the legends of hip hop. But Kumo D went at you. You don't remember Kumo? That was a classic I battle. Kumo D and LL Cool J going back and forth. That was a that was some classic battles. Like when when Mama said knock you out was a Kumo D diss. And LL before then Kumo D had like um, I go to work and how you like me now and all that kind of stuff. But Kumo D just went at Busy B just because. Busy B never said anything about Kumo D. He just went at him just because. And again, I know you guys don't know who this is, but this is just part of the history. I never heard of Busy B. Busy B I is. I thought you were talking about Busy Bone. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But Busy, but it was it was a little different back then because you know Busy B was, he was an MC, but he was a little pop too, and you know he had his little sayings and that kind of stuff. But Busy B was large. He was the man. Everybody loved Busy B. Everybody looked at Busy B and Kumo D. Basically came out and called him a sucker and dissed him just off off the humbug. Just came out all GP, and just ripped him. And so it don't you don't necessarily have to be provoked to come at somebody. You want to get at somebody on the record, get at somebody on the record. But the smart man always pick and chooses who we get at, and Eminem picks and chooses who we get at on who the record. Who would you like to see Eminem go at? Huh? Who? Who would you like S- to see? Somebody Eminem like a Nas, J Cole, somebody that got their status in the game is solidified. He guaranteed is a guaranteed fair battle. It's not no fair battle with Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon can't do nothing. I, what I has no. Nick Cannon done? I would have respect if Nick Cannon wanted to win this situation with Eminem. He just said, "Put a million dollars up. Let's put the gloves on and get in the ring." I do mean, that. Which is why you see Eminem went out and got one of the dopest battle rappers out there, Charlie Clips, to 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 get on on that diss record. Charlie Clips, if you if you've never seen Charlie Clips battle, I would recommend that you watch Charlie Clips battle. Put them gloves on with him, Nick Cannon. But. But yeah, so you've been I, working out, dude. But think about though, are, are, are those guys that you aren't those guys. Now, if it was just something for fun to go back and forth, but those guys that you mentioned, aren't they all at the point now where like they're not? Listen, honestly, think about it. When how often would, does somebody diss Jay Z and Jay Z comes back at him? You like for what? What I gotta come? I'm Jay Z. I ain't gotta what? Jay Z made two diss records to Nas one. I let you know, Nas. Yeah, but that was like twenty years ago, right? Yeah, more than twenty but years ago. Jay Z was the top mogul in the game. If somebody come at Jay Z now, I, I, I would doubt Jay Z gonna go back and for what? He no. Jay Z ain't got to. No, he not gonna. 
he might throw a little jab out there. Maybe. Nah. Maybe. Maybe. Nah. He he he's done it. He's old now. He's done. It. He, he don't so want no smoke you, now. You he can got see kids a, a Eminem versus the Nas or an Eminem versus Jay Z. They'd be like, they, they'd all be like, why? For what? What's this gonna benefit me? It's not gonna benefit me. If they want to just do it just for the culture, yeah, just for the dope. culture, it'd be dope for the it'd culture. For the culture. But it's like they do. They they don't even want to do that. Jay Z. The they they busy. Y'all, they busy doing their thing. Get on the uh when they do the BT awards. Get on the cipher. All y'all get on the cipher and see who 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 who, who make it happen. Eminem who number one. Eminem them had some dope ciphers though. He done, hey, he has had some dope. I don't, don't want to hear a little, little carpet or a little, little brick wall. I don't know who that is. Don't put them <laughs> on the cipher. I don't know who these. <laughs> <laughs> little carpet. <laughs> little carpet, though. <laughs> little 40 ounce. <laughs> little brick wall. <laughs> Why is everybody a little something nowadays? <laughs> a young something. Facts, like, yo, what? Facts. <laughs> Facts. Put somebody on the cipher that I, can, I know. Yeah. I, but but it, like that wouldn't even be like a Nas. That would have to be something they would have to do like just again just for the culture, or maybe they do like a pay per view for like, for like you know how much money that'll like make. That. Nas versus Eminem, M versus J, something like that. Nah, that'd make hip hop. It'd be dope. That'd lighten it for the that'd culture. Be, yeah. Throw KRS in there too. You know KRS in the city, but KRS is gonna get it. Yeah, KRS, still, he, he got love for the sport, man. He KRS gonna, is like if he you, got love for the sport. KRS said, "If you in the top ten in in rap." On the charts, I got a rhyme that will kill your career. I've already written something for you. He said it, it's no disrespect, but that's just how I practice. If you in the top ten in rap, KRS One has a rhyme written for you, ready to go. You want to battle KRS? Already got something locked and loaded. But that's <laughs> how MC. That's how you stay sharp. Yeah, that's how you stay sharp. So yeah, we know who coming at you. We know who coming at you. All right, man, we're gonna get out of here. All right, that's gonna do it for us. Thank you to Michaela Elmore from the Hopewell Loud Chiefs for coming on. Also, thank you to Allie Winnin from the Illyria Catholic Panthers for coming on. We appreciate you guys. If you want to hear those interviews, uh, go and download the Quad Brother Sports Show app. You can go back and listen to those interviews. Great interviews with two great young ladies. And uh, we're going to be reaching out to ADs, hopefully trying to get to some games this week. We'll see how that works. And um, that's it, man, for Eli Robinson, for Kevin Han- for Kevin Hanley, for Phil Rucker, <laughs> and for Reggie Logan. My name is Kevin Hanley. We out of here. Uh, Eli, take us out. The name of the song is called Bankroll by KM Beats. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad? Dog check. Dog check.